and framing of the RT statement of June 22nd, which inextricably linked my name to this whole fiasco. My name was mentioned 15 times in that statement. 15 times. And I was not consulted once. I did not have the Grant Thornton report, which RT had, and which RT acknowledged made no findings of wrongdoing on my part. I asked RT to clarify that this was the case. They did. Four days, four days after much of the, da much of the damage was done, pretty much all of the damage was done. I signed a contract in good faith. I declared my earnings. I paid every cent of tax. My employer has acknowledged that. It has engaged in deceptive practices to pay me practices that were hidden from me. The result, I'm nearly finished, forgive me for overgoing. The result of this is that I've become the face of a national scandal. I've been accused of being complicit, deceitful and dishonest. my friends and I'm very sorry for those whose lives have been made difficult with an incessant dripping of new revelations I'm thinking particularly of my radio show colleagues and friends that they've had to be put through all of this for reasons not of their own making they work hard they all work hard in RT and I want to thank those colleagues who have supported me through these last few weeks and in closing I'd like to thank the many people from across the country who've taken time to stop me on the street decent Irish citizens taking my shoulder and my elbow in their hands and saying, you'll get through this. I have nearly a foot off the ground high, ground high of cards and letters from people who have written to Ryan Tuberty, Dublin. And I got them fair play to the post people in on post. And I thank the Irish people for that. I am hopeful that they will see from my statement and my appearance here today that I am determined to inform them of the truth and to demonstrate that I have nothing to hide. And I'm also hopeful that I will soon get back on air to do the job I love. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you, Mr. Roberty. Uh, Mr. Kelly, no, it's normally five minutes for opening statements, and we've, we've gone 15 minutes into it. So I would ask you to, uh, it's normally five minutes for them. So I would ask you to, um, you know, to try and be brief, as brief as you can with it, please. But we do want to give you the opportunity because we realise that you're, you know, you're here today to Thank you. put it your side. So please Thank cooperate. Um, I just want to echo everything Ryan says. And I'm sorry that we're here today as well. We asked to come and, and to meet the House because of huge respect for it, and, and we haven't spoken to anybody else, and we just wanted to get the opportunity to put our side across. I'll try and be as brief as I possibly can, but um, if you'll allow me. So, Herlock and Deputies, thank you for the opportunity to meet with you today. I hope this meeting will help to clarify the confusion which has arisen over the past few weeks. At the outset, I want to say that we appreciate the seriousness of all of these issues. The controversy over the past few weeks has been damaging to RTE, but it's also been hugely damaging to Ryan Tuberty, to myself and to my own business. Earlier today, we circulated a pack which we believe are the key documents that will help you understand this crisis. The document runs 39 pages and it includes relevant excerpts from Ryan's 2015 and 2020 contracts with RTE. Extracts from the accounts of Ryan's company for the relevant years, various mails which track the back and forth of the negotiations for the 2020 RT contract with Renault. We've made redactions where necessary, but we've been as transparent as possible to inform you uh, with all the information at our disposal. I want to highlight a number of documents which, we go, which will go to the heart of the issues. Let me start with Ryan's under declaration of payments made to Ryan when they were published figures for 17, 18, 19, and in January 21. This issue has caused a lot of distress. 
and it's entirely a mess of RTE's own making. Ryan's contract from 2015, pages one to four of the pack, clearly states the fees he received in each of the following five years, and they're set out in clause 8.1 of the contract. It was 495, 495, 545, 545, 545 for the five years. He received those fees exactly, nothing more and nothing less. This is confirmed in the extracts from Ryan's filed accounts, company Total Productions, which we also include in the pack. We note that the accounts of Total Productions run from January to December, whereas Ortiz's contract ran from September. In January 21, when Orti made its incorrect declarations, they knew what they had paid Ryan. Indeed, the Chief Financial Officer emailed us on the 19th of December 2019 on page five in the, in the pack. She set out the actual earnings for each of the relevant years correctly. But just over a year later, in January 2021, Orti made false or incorrect declarations about the same figures. In some respects, this was an accident waiting to happen. We previously asked Orti to give us reasonable notice when they plan to publish figures, my email on the 16th of January 2020, page six of the pact specifically requests this. If they'd done that, we would have had time to check the figures and avoid errors. However, Orti ignored our request for reasons I still don't understand. In March 2020, we saw the first sign that Orti, with all its accountants, auditors, might be struggling to understand the, the correct accounting treatment for what they paid Ryan in 2017, 2018 and 2019. That month they sent us a letter about exit fee bonus Ryan was due as part of his 2015 contract. It was agreed that Ryan was not going to raise an invoice for this and they wanted to agree how to explain it. But in the draft which was sent to us, they proposed to change the payments which they made to Ryan already, effectively lowering them by 120,000 euros. Their logic was that they could offset 120,000 we had agreed not to ask for in 2020 against payments which had already been made to Ryan for 17, 18 and 19. We argued against this and they accepted our points at the time. And this is clear from the document pages 14 to 16 of our pack. For some reason, however, it looks like the confused thinking returned and they published again the wrong figures in January 2021, effectively causing his reputation damage to Ryan in the process. Huge reputational damage, sorry. One important point I should add. Just last month, on the 23rd of June, RT published new figures. Effectively, they restated figures for payments to Ryan for 17, 18 and 19 and added in declarations for figures paid to him in 20 and 21. Bizarrely, the figures they declare for both 20 and 21 are wrong. In both years, they overstate the amount they paid Ryan. And we address this issue on page 28 and 29 of the pack. For 2020, they overstated earnings of 62,536. For 21, they overstated 83,381. So clearly, Orti is still struggling with these declarations. Now let's turn to the Renault contract, which ran parallel to the 2020 contract which Ryan had with Orti. I refer you to page five of the pack. This is an email sent to NK Management on the 19th of December 2019 from Orti's then Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Breda O'Keefe. This email sets out Orti's starting position for negotiations on the 2020 contract. You will see that this email is where the idea of a commercial sponsorship of the third party with an annual fee of 75,000 euros is first suggested. This comes from RTE. This did not strike us as unusual, as Renault was a key sponsor for RTE, so it was understandable that they would try to wish to ensure that all parties were aligned. Next, we come to RTE's decision to underwrite this Renault contract. This is perhaps the most shocking revelation of this morning. Since this controversy began, Orti tried to distance themselves from this decision. Effectively, they have blamed the former di Director General D. Forbes for doing a solo run and giving a verbal commitment to underwrite the contract on a Zoom call in May. Orti executives had said that there was a strong pushback against the idea of underwriting the agreement. That is incorrect. I refer you to page 10 of the pack. So at the time, Ms. Breed O'Keefe was Chief Financial Officer of RTE. On this page, you will see an email which she sent to my office dated the 20th of February, 2020. It is copied to another member of the Executive Board, the then Director General and RTE's solicitor. In this email, 
Ms. Breed O'Keefe responds in red to various points which had been discussed. She states at the top of the email that this is our final position, because negotiations go back and forth, back and forth. This is our final position in respect, in respect of the new contract. On the last paragraph on this page, Ms. O'Keefe, on behalf of RTE, states explicitly, we can provide you with the side letter to underwrite this fee for the duration of the contract. There was no secret. There is no secret. There was no secret. To our surprise, Ms. O'Keefe told the committee last week, when she left RTE in March, that there was no support to provide that type of guarantee, and no such guarantee was on offer. But she had written to us, making exactly that offer a month earlier. Last week, nobody from RTE here with Miss O'Keefe challenged her when she said that. And we were surprised too, because on the 30th of June, four days before she appeared at the media committee, we wrote to RTE and highlighted the significance of Miss O'Keefe's email. Her email also casts a new light on the contribution of Adrian Lynch, Deputy Director General, to this committee. Mr Lynch told the committee that agreement was to give underwrite, the contract was given verbally on a Zoom call with NK management on the 7th of May by the then Director General. And he described this as significant point at the centre of this. Orty had tried to portray the guarantee as the decision given late in the negotiations on a Zoom call by D Forbes with the awareness of the executive board. Clearly, this is not correct. The decision was taken early by RTE and known widely within the executive board in RTE. So let me move to the invoicing arrangements for Renault contract. Our document pack shows that RTE did not just suggest the idea of the contract with Renault. It oversaw every development and implementation of same. We were happy with that. We knew Renault was a major, major sponsor for RTE. So RTE would be committed to keeping them happy. We knew the contract with Renault was a separate contract from Ryan's independent contractor services Ryan had for RTE for radio and TV work. We understood that Ryan would have to do extra work for Renault, but that was no difference to the other work that Ryan would do for the BBC or with his publishers, etc. This was just a separate commercial agreement. Ryan was agreeing to a substantial pay cut from RTE and he was entitled to seek other work outside of RTE. There was nothing secret about this. Nothing secret about this. Far from it, the contract required Ryan to do public appearances for Renault, which they could seek and expect attention, and indeed they did. So with the terms agreed, Orty instructed us how to invoice for this work. For the first invoice, they instructed us to raise an invoice directly with Renault, and they gave us names and details set on the proposed narrative for the invoice. As you can see, the instructions Orty gave us for this is an email on the 24th of July 2020, page 23 in this pack, and on page 24, you can see the invoice we did indeed send to Renault. When it came to invoices for two and three, RT gave us new instructions. I refer to, to page 25 of the pack. This is an email from the then commercial director, Geraldine O'Leary, dated the 29th of April 2022. This invoice passed on instructions as for how invoices two and three should be raised, and the email instructions on the company name to be put on the invoice, asked us, the address to be put on the invoice, the VAT reference to be included in, in the invoice, and it instructs us not to put any person's name on it. This email also gave us general insurance from a colleague of Mr. Lee's that said, if he, meaning NK management, sends it back to me, I will sort everything else out. You should know that while invoices were made dead to Astus, we were directed by e to email them to RTE. They would do what was necessary to process them with Astus. I should stress that at this time, we and NK management had no idea who Astus was. We had no reason to think that Astus was linked to RTE or that it was acting on behalf of RTE. We had no idea they might be making payments to us on behalf of RTE or that the payments were linked to RTE underwriting the Renault contract. RTE never said that to us. Astus never said that to us. And Renault never said that to us. We simply followed instructions we were given, as we had with the first invoice. You will see a copy of the two invoices raised in the name VAS has been sent by email from us to RTE in the pack, pages 26, 27. People have asked us why we went along with those instructions, why we didn't set out more detail about what the invoice is related to. But at the time, we had no reason to suspect that RTE might be trying to hide payments to Ryan, and I'm still shocked that that was their intention. We trusted RTE. 
It's not some unknown start-up with opaque funding and chequered past or a record for dodgy financial dealings. It's a national institution, 100 years old, massive business turning over 350 million a year. It has internal and external auditors. It has a heavyweight board, teams of financial advisors, accountants. As Mr. Backhurst said yesterday, Orti has robust processes and rigorous oversight of financial in many parts of the organisation. And that is what we assume too. Why would we suspect that they were hiding information about one of their key contracts? Why would they even do that? Why would they even do that? We're nearing the end, and I'm sorry, but it's important. But I want to address one other thing. There's been a lot of coverage of a side letter with the 2020 contract in which the Director General says the agreed earnings in the contract won't be reduced during the term of the contract. As any lawyer will confirm, this letter had no practical impact. The contract itself guarantees the earnings, and that is what a contract does. We were simply trying to impress on RTE that Ryan had just signed up to new cuts in his 2020 contract of 525,000, and had also never taken the payment of 120,000. So they shouldn't even think about coming back for more cuts, given the size of those cuts. And to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, for the past number of years, Ryan has continued to perform at the highest level, working with millions of colleagues and leading shows which bring in, over the six-year period, 100 million in revenue to RTE. He raises tens of millions for charities through the toy show, various appeals. We've heard a lot about RTE's public service ethos, a lot about their public service ethos, but let's call a spade a spade. RTE is a hybrid organisation. Its commercial activities are key to keeping the station afloat, maintaining jobs and creating content. Ryan Trubity has been a huge driver for, most, for Orti's most successful commercial activities over the past 14 years. Ryan and I have attracted, and our families and our friends, a horrendous, horrendous amount of criticism and abuse in the past few weeks, and I would not wish it on anybody. Why? Because the only figure in this whole story whose face was recognisable was Ryan Tuberty. He's been made a poster boy for this scandal, and that's undeserved. This is not the Ryan Tuberty scandal. This is the RTE scandal. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just before, we, thanks for those opening statements. Just before we move to, uh, to the committee members, um, just uh, there's one issue, Mr. Mr. Turbert, you might clarify for me. Uh, the issue of the 75,000 payments, obviously the invoices for that, was what brought this to light in March, with, uh, when the auditors found them. And when I first heard about this, and I wanted to ask you this this morning, yeah. just to set the, the scene for this meeting, that uh, those that 75,000 shortfall gap that had to be made up, call it what you like, additional payment. The country was shut down. Yes. Uh, thousands of my constituents and people around the country were on two or three hundred euros a week pandemic payment. And you and your agent, you know, between you, did you have any doubts about the merits of that or the credibility of looking, you know, to make up that 75,000 uh, at that particular point? You know, because you're on the Late Late Show and very, very good service, you know, and uh, I watched it because, you know, it was good viewing, uh, it right throughout through COVID, and to just to acknowledge that the performances were great, uh, given the circumstances. But did you have any doubts about, you know, the credibility or the merits of that, of looking for that, and your own credibility? I appreciate the question and, and the, the kind words. short answers, because I'll keep them short. I, 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 I think what I'm going to be saying a lot today, uh, uh, like which is, is in relation to that, in relation to that is that is that my my agent and friend Noel Kelly, it, it's his job to get the best deal as he sees it for his client on your, and on clients. Your instructions, Mr. Turbidy. Well, you could say that, yeah, yes, of course. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he would absolutely try and get the, the, yeah. what he considers to be the best deal. Is there he, any doubts in those discussions, those discussions that you had between you back in the earlier part of 2020? I think he, I, this. I think it would be fair to say that the merits of it. At the, in terms of the the. Uh, the financial implications of the commercial side of RT, that it probably felt it wasn't problematic in that sense. That's not what I'm asking you. Did you have doubts about the, the public optics of this and the possible reputational damage 
of looking for that 75,000 in those circumstances, yes or no? And did you discuss that, the merits of that? That's all I want to know. I would say that I would always have doubts about doing too much. And, and, and did you discuss that with your agent? I, do, do, do we have a conversation about that? That's no, unlikely. No. no. no I'd so you had no con you're telling me here this morning yeah. that you had no conversation with NK mm -hmm. Communications regarding the matter of looking for this gap of 75,000. No, we, we wouldn't. We, we would be okay. inclined to just, I, my, my, to be honest with you, Keir, like I say to Noel, I say, you, you do your job and I do mine, right. and that's how it works. But you knew, that the, you knew that this gap had to be met up and this 75,000 had to be magicked up somewhere or another, for want of a better term. I trust in the process. Confused. Yes. But so you've terrified that you've no doubts about the merits, the credibility, or the re possible reputational damage. That wasn't discussed. That was not discussed. Okay, no. thank you. Thank you. Deputy Imelda Munster, 15 minutes. Thank you, Chair. And, uh, good morning to our guests, or witnesses, rather. Um, I just want to start off with the tripartite agreement, Mr. Kelly. Um, just in relation to that, can you, and I'd ask you to keep your answers as short as possible, can you tell us briefly how did that actually come about? What was the reason for it? Um, I'll just refer to some of my notes if you don't mind. Um, how it came about, it was a, a, an RTE initiative. RTE, Ren, Ren, Renault's obviously. But, yeah, okay, sorry, just for a second. It was an RTE initiative, mm -hmm. but it had to stem from somewhere. You said in your um, opening statement that Ryan was agreeing to a substantial pay cut from RTE. So was it, did it come about on the basis of you negotiating with RTE? No, no, it had right, no Right, so it, how it, did it, it come had, about? It had no relation. Um, or Ryan's contract is for 205 radio shows um, and it's for 38 yeah, yeah. two-hour TV shows. This was a, com a totally yeah. separate agreement and it came about um, because Renault and RTE wanted Ryan to do more work around the sponsorship, wanted him to do late, late shows and, and dealers, etc. So that's where it came from. So it, you're saying, you're seriously saying that it, it didn't come about at all from the pay cuts that Ryan was going no, to take. No, it wasn't this, a way this, of topping no, up the salary. The, uh, the sponsor wanted us to do activity to embellish the sponsorship around the dealers. But why would RTE, of their own bat, be concerned about setting your client up with a commercial deal? Why, it, would, they, why would they suddenly, when at a time when everybody else was asked to take pay cuts, why would RTE, and who in RTE, came to you and said, listen, we want to look after Ryan, we want to set up a separate commercial sure. deal. Uh, can you honestly say that you did not initiate that in any shape or form with RTE? Whatsoever. Right, so tell us then, who in RTE came to you and what did they so, say? Um, if I refer, refer to page five of the pack, <coughs> under the contract, the ter proposed terms of the new contract, this came from Breed O'Keefe and was uh, copied to other people as well. So they wanted Ryan, and Renault had wanted Ryan to do, uh, to go to the dealers, to, you know, to meet all of their customers. The, 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 the relationship with the sponsor is with RTE. We have nothing to do with that. I've no, I, 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 we don't work with Renault. I don't, you know, I, so the relationship is with RTE and the relationship is, it's, it's, Probably the biggest sponsorship. So RTE contacted you and said, listen, we're a little bit concerned. Ryan is taking a pay cut. We this, want to this is set up a, a separate deal. This is, this is nothing about pay cuts. This right, is nothing about... Okay. This was a separate, a separate commercial deal. That, but who, that, who, initiated, who came to you? As, was it the as, Director as, General uh, came to you? No, uh, Breed, uh, Breed O'Keefe. Breed O'Keefe came mm -hmm. to see. In page nine of your documents, the pack that you gave us, mm -hmm. um, it says... We would also need, and this came from yourself, I think, we would also need a side letter agreement from RTE to guarantee and underwrite this fee for the duration of the contract and beyond into the next contract. So yeah. you sought a guarantee for a deal that you'd nothing really to do it. Do well, with why, the why, 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 we, well, why I was looking for a guarantee is quite simple. It was never for RTE to pay it. It was that if the sponsor changes, so we've, we've, we have a, a five-year yeah. five contract with RTE for so you sought five radio the, shows yeah, and, and no, we know that, you said that TV but shows. Sorry, time is of the essence. But you sought the guarantee that RTE would pay if the deal went belly up. It was never for RTE to pay. The guarantee was around 
if another sponsor came in, that we, they would have to, so they, again, the relationship is with RT and the sponsor, not with us. So they'd have to talk to the sponsor, right. say, He's... do you want him, you know, would you like him to do, like, you know, the sponsor obviously wants to have um, the host perform so, different duties so for them. So you didn't agree with RTE underwriting the deal? It wasn't about underwriting, it was about a sponsor change. It was yeah, actually but what it was at about. this stage, the sponsors were gone. And no, you the said it was still never there. about. No, Reynolds, just, I'm talking about the tripart. I'm talking yeah. about years two and three as well, right? Yes. Not only did RTE underwrite the Reynolds contract, but they also, there was an agreement there to underwrite the two. And you were looking for a side letter agreement from RTE to guarantee and underwrite this for the duration of this contract and beyond into the next contract. So you clearly there said, page nine of your documents, you wanted RTE to underwrite. And in response to you, uh, Breda O'Keefe, I think it's uh, her email on page 10 of your pack, um, she said on behalf of RTE, um, states explicitly that we can provide you with a side letter to underwrite this fee for duration of contract, right? So you'd re requested that they underwrite it, and she, in that email, in page 10 of the pack, was responding to your request. That's correct? Yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah. What, what...? So, are you, I mean, there's one thing about, and you said uh, that Ryan was um, agreeing to substantial pay cut and he was entitled to seek work elsewhere and that's that's absolutely fine nobody has an issue with this but the problem here is that the deal was underwritten at your request for the three years at your request by the public purse no that's the, that's the problem here okay. the deal was underwritten at your request for the three years of the contract and it was paid for by public monies that's the issue um, I asked for the deal to be underwritten because the relationship with the sponsor is with RTE, it's not yeah, with us. Yeah, underwritten by who? RTE? Yeah. Yeah, the public purse, yeah. But the, but the spon it's actually about the sponsorship. We, we, I we, just want, no, look, if you... So the, you, in relation, in relation you to... You requested this was it to a commercial. be underwritten by RTE and that could only mean that RTE take the hit for it and they pony up. I just want to move on because time is of no, the essence. That, well, you refer to page 25 in the packets, page six in your statement, there was an email from the commercial director uh, for the two by three invoices for 75 and it was uh, should be raised and there was an instruction not to put any person's name on it. And you said there was no secret about this deal, but you agreed to not putting a name on that. I mean, did you, I presume you'll agree that there was no consultancy fees that there was no consultancy done for 75,000 for yourself. What, what? No, we, no. What, yeah. what, what we so, did was act on, at all times, <coughs> instructions from RTE. And as I've said, RTE is a 100-year-old organisation with auditors, accountants. Yeah. Yeah. Why, but why, you're why, also why, a why, business why, man, we, you're we, a negotiator. We, tr we, tr we trust Sorry. the process. Why uh, would you not trust look. the process? <laughs> you're a businessman, you're a negotiator, you look after your clients. That's, that's your job. That's your job. There's, there's no issue with that whatsoever. But you'd imagine when you were instructed not to put names on the invoices, and we're not talking about 2 99 or 3 50, 3 euro 50 cents. We're talking about invoices for 75,000. And you knowing that you had ask them to underwrite the agreement. So you had asked them that they underwrite, they confirmed that they were underwriting the agreement, they were putting it through the barter account, you were told not to put a name on it, you knew exactly what it was for, and you didn't flag that up, you went along with it, and yet you say there was nothing secret about the deal. There was nothing secret, we simply acted under instructions from RTE. Yeah, yeah, but you knew they were underwriting the deal, and you knew that was the 75,000 payment that was due to, to Mr. Tuberty, we but you didn't put we any... Sim we simply yeah. acted under instructions from yeah. RTE. So that's, yeah, fair enough. Then. Um, we had heard last week that the, the auditors weren't happy that Grant Thornton had brought, were brought in and that um, at some point you were informed mm -hmm. of it. Uh, when was that? And that was it the Director General that informed you? Or who that, and when? That was May... Um, 
That was May 23rd of this May year. May 23rd. And okay. that would have been from Ortiz's um, legal office. Their legal office, mm -hmm. which would have been who exactly? From from somebody from Ortiz's legal office. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So that was from Paula Maluli, Director of Legal Affairs, and that was the 26th of May 2023. Okay. And so RTE knew, Grant Thornton knew, you knew. Did you tell your client about it? Yes, we would have informed our client, of course, but that was the first that we had heard. heard about it. That was that the 26th was a, that of was May. Yeah. yeah. I just want to come to Mr. Tuberty, if I can, please. And there's just, um, in 2019, you might have seen this out in the public domain recently, that you were launching the St. Vincent de Paul um, Christmas appeal, and when you were interviewed, you were said that you were haunted by um, the idea of children in poverty and the homeless crisis. And you also said that you'd accept RTE's cost-cutting measures gracefully. And when it comes to this sort of issue, that's not something you've ever been found wanting on. Mm -hmm. But here we are three or four years later, and we know that that pay cut was subsidized by this deal. Yeah, I wouldn't characterise that as, a, as a, a pay cut being subsidised by any deal. I also, I, I also. But that's that's what it looks I would also, like. I with mean, respect, that's what it was with respect, about. deputy, yeah. I would also uh, urge you not to conflate somebody being well paid with somebody who who might not have a conscience, uh, particularly with the work uh, that you, you know, that you mentioned, Saint Vincent yeah. de Paul. It's a charity I have enormous time for since I was no, a I'm child. Sure, in fairness, no, but I, I'm I, sure... I, no, sorry, under, just one second, but under, under, we're asking questions I appreciate that, here. but just, yeah. just, I just think yeah. it, it's, no, it's, it's under circumstances. Yeah. No, I, would, that's I would not fine. like to that's sully absolutely fine. the work and you that do, those people do around nobody, the country. Oh, there's nobody mentioned who, with, for, the work for, that those people so, do. So I'm referring to what you stated, that you are quoted in the media. Yes. Right, that's what I'm referring okay, to. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I apologize. And I accept that you do a lot of charity work. No, I'm not trying to say that. I'm not trying there's to... nobody saying yeah, anything I... otherwise. Sorry, Deputy, you know, I appreciate you're, you're, that. Yes, I understand. You do that, good work. Um, but at the same time, you knew that this separate deal was being done and it would compensate for the pay cuts. But you also knew, and this is the thing, that your agent had requested that RTE underwrite that agreement. Well, so you I, knew, I, no, sorry, I'll just get to, to the yeah. question. So you knew that that pay deal was going to make softer or not even in, enhance any pay cut that had been taken. But you also knew from, through your agent, that RTE were underwriting that deal. So yeah. that you knew so that, that when you're coming- There's a misunderstanding this, here, yeah. honestly, this, honestly. This was a, t a separate contract no, for, I'm not talking sorry, about the this is a separate I'm contract about the, for, separate, for separate services. Yeah. A separate I'm contract. I'm talking about the tripartite. Just, just allow Mr. Kelly to answer briefly. Yeah. This was we'll a separate concise. contract yeah. for separate services. This had nothing to do with Ryan's new contract for radio and TV service. No, this no, is a separate talking, contract. Yeah. That's, so, that's what I'm talking about. The tripartite deal. Yeah. Where the two. With RT and Renault, yes, the sponsor yeah, and RTE. RTE yeah, 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 had yeah. underwritten that agreement, right? Yes. And they were paying it. And my question to Mr. Tuberty no, no, was... No, Renault were paying it. Sorry? Renault were paying it. Renault, but RTE paid them. And then the but, 275 But, that, but, that, but if, if RTE paid them, that was an RTE thing. Yeah. Renault paid, Renault paid. Yeah, but and if RTE, RTE paid them, that, that, has, was, yeah, that has absolutely that's nothing fine. to do with well, us. We don't, work for, right. I don't work for RTE. No, yeah. that's we don't work for RTE. Yeah. So no, just, I, I, I know two, you're trying to, to know, clarify. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm talking about the two... That we've just discussed it to you, there's no way you don't know about it, the two €75,000 payments mm -hmm. um, that were put through, that you were asked not to put a name, not to put any person's name on. Again, they again, were underwritten, again, as you said, at your is, request. Is the question being directed to Mr Turberty? Mr Turberty, yeah, well, yes. Mr Kelly, yeah. please don't interrupt. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Mr Turberty. So, yeah. I think that the reason, sorry, Deputy, to clarify, the reason Noel is, is coming in on this is because his knowledge of the nuts and bolts of these things is far superior to mine. So. I'm yeah. not being disrespectful no, to you by not answering enough. some and, of my And points. likewise, but Thank I'm you. asking you again yes. in relation to that, mm -hmm. when, you know, and you did yeah. say that, you know, it, it haunts you and child poverty and that, and that's, yeah. that's perfectly understandable. That. And of course, of course you do. Yeah. But I'm saying, where does that tally with the fact that you knew that the two payments 
that we're going through for 75,000. The tripart agreement was yeah. struck, right? Yes. You knew that they were for yourself as part of that tripart agreement, but you would have also known that RTE had agreed to underwrite that agreement. So, in fact, it was the taxpayers, it was the licence fee holders that were paying that money. It As I understand it, it wasn't the there, was, there, was a, there was a relationship with Renault that would sort that out. No, the, no, the second and third one we're talking about. Where we're, I mean... Yeah, but uh, am I not right in saying that, that the second and third one? No, there there, there yes, seems to be a misunderstanding. No, no, no there's no absolute... We've okay. sat through three weeks of it, in all fairness, Mr. Tuffy. There's no, <laughs> no misunderstanding from our... Well, I'm misunderstanding, yeah, obviously. Yeah. My, there's apologize. no misunderstanding. Yeah, well, I, I'm talking about the 275. Look, okay. if you do want... If you prefer not to answer, that's fine. No, if you don't want to answer... No, I, I'm happy to answer. I just, I just feel that I was always under the impression that that money was not was from Renault. Was from Renault. Right? Yes. Exactly. You received exactly. 345,000 extra in payments. Now... It was underwritten by RTE to yeah. the taxpayer. I, I, the taxpayer I, 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 I really dispute that. OK, so we're going to move on because we just have to give movement okay. because we have full attendance here. Uh, Deputy Mark Thank you Cossie, for your time. 10 minutes. Thank you very much, Chairperson, um, and thank you um, to the witnesses for attending and for your opening statements. Uh, I know, Mr Tuberty, you're fond of a, a small, quirky fact that tells a story. Um, and I'm sure as well you know 79% of us listen to radio daily here in Ireland, uh, despite everything else that's open to us, from Spotify to podcasts to, to everything else. We're like most people who are big radio listeners in, in our house, and you were in our kitchen five mornings a week. Um, and I think that's the thing. I, th I think it's... You were that familiar voice in our kitchen. You know, when you told us we were all in it together during COVID in particular and during the recessions, we believed you. Uh, and I think that's why we, we feel so shattered by this story. Now, you've set out a, a very strong rebuttal here. It's clear that RTE, when they appear before us again, on Thursday are going to have a very serious set of questions that they have to answer. But the fact remains, public trust in our public broadcaster and in you, for right or for wrong, has been shattered. Um, and that has to be rebuilt. Uh, and maybe today is the start and, uh, and we'll see. Um, I wanted to ask you just a very quick question. Did you engage the services, did the tree engage the services of crisis comms team before appearing today, either internal or external? We we had we, we did assemble a team of people to talk to to talk with and to get the best advice. I was always told that by relative minds. So always surround yourself with people smarter than you. So yeah, of course I spoke to people. Yeah, were people in pay in order to offer crisis comms advice, either internal or external? I, I presume they, they weren't doing it for for free, of course. Okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, I hope the answer to this is no. But were you advised by? those people to delay the, the documentation until half no, this morning. No, no, no. The documentation, and, and I, I am, uh, my apologies for that. I think the... It's a very, it's a very comprehensive set of, of documentation. Yeah, it, yeah. it sheds a lot of light do you want me to, do you want on me to come back on the things, on, uh, but it was to receive it at half eight. Yeah. And I think particularly of the staff who support this committee who stayed up until very late last my night. My apologies got to up them, very yeah. early this morning. Do you want me to come back on that or would Briefly, you rather keep going? Okay, I'll, be, I'll try. The last three weeks have been chaotic, they have been destructive, they have been beyond difficult. Um, and all I'll say to you is that we wanted to get things right today because so many people have been getting things wrong. Okay, I fully accept. I don't want to interrupt, hence, but I have one night Hence, to, the, one the, night we were clock. working on this till the mid, burning the midnight oil, so, yeah. Thank I just you. want to examine one thing that's in your opening statement this morning. You state clearly that you took a 20% pay cut. Um, is that inclusive or exclusive of the €75,000 that you are receiving either from Renault or through or to you through a barter account? When you say you took a 20% pay cut, is that inclusive or exclusive of the €75,000? No, no, I'll take that. If, if I can answer that, thank you. Um, the 20% was Ryan's contract was 495, 495, 545, 545, 545. That so was the, this 20% that, refers that, that, to that the, the payment sorry, I, direct I, I, I from RTE. I'll explain the percentage. So that was f from 15 to 19. And in Ryan's then next contract, he, the, his salary was 440,000 per annum, which was 200,000 for radio, 240,000 for TV. That was 105,000 reduction per year by five. So that was 525,000. 
it didn't include the 120,000 that he didn't take, and the Renault 75,000 was a completely separate contract. So this was on his TV okay. and radio earnings. So it's exclusive of the Renault contract or the payment through or yeah. paper. Yes, yeah. Now, I, I just have to contest that we, we, we regard this as separate. Now, the, the email over and back that we see in the contract negotiations are shocking to, I think, all of the members for a number of reasons. One being the number of people who are actually included, and you've drawn attention to that. Yes. But it also points very clearly to the fact that actually it's not separate. It is part of the RTE no, contracting. No, no, it's not part of it's the RTE within, contracting. It, I mean, if it was entirely separate, then why would RTE be so, RTE, involved in this at all? RTE came to us with this. Like, at all times, everything to do with this contract was under instruction from RTE, but it was the, the, the contract was, and the payments were with Renault, the sponsor. And Renault is still the sponsor of, of, of the Late Late Show. Okay. I, I asked the question, Mr. Tuberty, and it was in your opening statement. So that's exclusive of the seventy-five thousand. Would you accept that it's difficult for us to reconcile the idea that this was I, I, an entirely I, separate arrangement when it formed part of the contract negotiation? Yeah, I understand where you're coming from entirely, but yeah, okay, I, so understand, I, I understand the, the room for for perception issues. Yes. Okay, um, Mr. Kelly, I just want to move on to. Uh, your part in this. I want to ask briefly, because I think it's important that we put to bed the idea that Mr. Tuberty made any decision around the late late uh, on foot off. Sure. Uh, we know that the two problematic invoices were presented to D Forbes on the 8th of March, and uh, we know that Mr. Tuberty announced his decision. Whether, whenever he took his decision, he announced it on the 16th of March. Um, would you have D Forbes' number in your phone? No. No. I. I if I can explain, I've met D Forbes, I would say, and, and this is like, it, it's, it's, but there's so many untruths and so many stuff. Like, I'm finding it bizarre. So I, I've, I've only ever met D Forbes with her legal team okay. and with her and her lawyers in their office, in RTE. I have never had a cup of tea with D Forbes. I've never met D Forbes for lunch. I've never met her for dinner. I don't know D Forbes apart from when I meet her in the RTE. Uh, I'm an so RTE sorry, moment. and it's, we're so time compressed here. I think if you, if you have a question with regard to the departure of the Late Late Show, that was so deeply personal and so deeply from my heart, I would urge you to ask me about that. I want to ask a very simple question, and it sounds like you welcome the opportunity. Was there any communication to either yourself, Mr. Tuberty, or to Noel Kelly management, between the 8th and the 16th of March, with regard to these problematic invoices. No, not that. No, that's, that's no. fine. The, the, the first indication was on the 23rd of May. Well, now, I do want to contest that because on the 3rd of May, there is an over and back, a 3rd and the 5th of sorry, May. Sorry, sorry, I meant Paul and Maloney and, Maloney and, and Thor I mean, uh, Grant Thornton. Sorry. Uh, NK management. Yeah. Where specific reference is made to the, the CMS invoices. Yes, and I do sorry. want to ask about the decision to use CMS. So I do want to contest that because there is certainly an over and back between North sorry, Kelly on, Management on the, on the 3rd of May, and Paul and Maloui. There's, there's just a lot of emails. On the 3rd of May um, was the first time that we were made aware of it. And then after that, we met with Grant Thornton to talk to them about it. Okay. So in relation to Ryan stepping down or stepping back, Ryan had said it to me the previous year, and I was, I said to him, why, why are you leaving? Yeah, and, he and just so, said, so did my family. They thought I was mad. And to be honest with you, a very good friend of ours, when Ryan, I said, Ryan, why are you leaving? Stay on the late late. It's a brilliant, it's a great show, you know. And I knew after COVID, when you're playing to no audience, when you're, <laughs> that it was a really difficult show to do. So, Mr. Said Kelly, I'm so sorry, sorry to be interrupting, sorry, and I don't want to come across I, as but, but, but I, know, I have but, but, two minutes remaining and a list of questions okay. as long anyway, as we Anyway, we, 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 we'd been aware of this for quite a while, and I was trying to get him to stay. Okay. I want to ask you about this, so this invoicing of Astus. And I do notice in, in the accounts that are returned at the end of the year that money transferred to Total Productions is, you can see it, essentially. Uh, in, in a normal run of a year, the, the, the amount of money derived from Noel Kelly management is quite small. In the years in question, it's, yeah. it's large. You can see the 75,000 in it. Um, you have, I think, four companies that which are registered out of Unit B2 in the Calment Office Park in Ballymount. So Noel Kelly Management, Noel Kelly Management, Nominees Limited, which is registered 16th March this year, Century Merchandising Services, Cleary Consultancy Limited. Why was it CMS? that decided to raise the invoice? Because I have two companies, which is NK Management and CMS, and we were asked to send the invoice in from CMS. 
by RTE. Why? Why CMS? That was their instructions. It's, well, see, they would, they would, it's no Kelly management that appears at the end of year. Sure, sure. But CMS is, a, is we own CMS as well. It's a sister company. And you, no, expl no explanation for why Noel Kelly management above CMS. It just adds a layer sure, of opacity. Sure, sure. Because no, Noel Kelly management, I know who's that, who yes. that is. CMS, I don't. Yeah, again, we were directed by RTE. With this direction from RTE, um, we've all received emails in saying, you know, just uh, all you have to do is invoice a certain company in, in wherever and all of this money will be yours. This idea of invoice for 75,000 to a, a company you say you don't know, you've never come across, um, you've no reason to suspect or to are hiding payments, but they said, can you, can you invoice this company in order to receive a payment? And you didn't say, I'm sorry, but who is this company and why am I invoicing them? Sure. RTE, it has its, its say, 1,800 employees, turns over 350 million a year. We're a small little company. There's, there's eight of us. Small this, this, company. I mean, and, context and, and we, and, is and, sorry, you yeah, have and been and upset and with the reporting we, of earnings and we were beforehand. Asked, we were asked under instruction to do this, and that's what we did. Briefly, am I allowed? Just very briefly. Just to the deputy, uh, regarding your, your listener, excuse me, you're listening to my radio show during the week. Um, I my missus, unfortunately, I'm up here. But sorry, you're, 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 my missus listens. You're your wife, to regularly. Sorry, or your partner. Um, well, thank you for, for, for that, and, and I'm sorry to hear that 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 um, she feels that way about the program. But I can assure you, this is what today is all about: is rebuilding that trust that may have been thank undermined you. by a lot of mis no. misunderstanding. Thank you very much, and thank you both for uh, coming in here. Voluntary, very much appreciated. Can I just follow up on my colleague there? Uh, Century Merchandising Services Limited is CMS and Cent CMS. Yes. You no, know, no. But when I've done my company office searches, I found all the CMS companies have been struck off. So I'm, I'm a bit concerned about you using that when the company's office showed that all the CMS companies have been struck off the register. So you're tra it's trading under uh, Century Merchandising Services yes. Limited, not CMS. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, just, C just, C CMS is just the. the uh, I know, but the it's just name. from the clarification okay, point of view, and that CMS, sorry. all the companies that are registered yeah. under that name have yeah. been struck off for various reasons. Can I just ask a question in relation to the contracts? The contracts between RT and um, Total Productions Limited, that's the agreement, the five year agreement. Yes. But the agreement then between, uh, which is drafted up by yourselves, is between. Renault Oller Limited, RTE, and Ryan Troberty. It's not between Total Productions Limited. Is there a reason for that? So the Renault contracts, um, sorry, on page five. Um, I, again, no, I have a copy of the agreement here, sure. that, and it shows this is the agreement that was, um, that was prepared in relation to the agreement between the three organisations. Yes. yes. But, this it's not with total productions. So the agreement is, was written by RTE Legal? No, by, no, by, this is the one that I've got, which is in... Oh, sorry, for, in, for, for the services, for the services. Yeah, so with the services, we had numerous meetings with Renault in relation to the act, actual activity itself. Um, and I think part of the confusion is the, the, the events were for 2021-22. But the agreement is in is in a separate legal entity to the agreement between Total Productions Limited and, and RTE. RTE. Yes, this, it's, uh, but it's, this agreement is between Ryan Tuberty, Renault and RTE. Sure, well, so Ryan Tuberty Ryan 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 being Total. Okay, but can I just ask then, in relation to 75,000, does that go into the Total Productions yes. account? Yes. Okay, because the invoice then, when you, the invoice that was produced um, which I think you no, we, well, we, we'd invoice and then, then it, then it, then, then but it the, be... the invoice doesn't mention Total Productions in the invoice that you produced. It mentions Ryan Tuberty. It doesn't mention Total. It doesn't mention Total at all. Sorry. That's on page oh, uh, sorry. 24. So, absolutely, sorry, page 24. So, we were directed again by RT, RT Legal, to put down Ryan Tuberty Beef Spoke Partnership between Renault but, but Ireland, and Ryan Tuberty included personal but, sorry, appearance but if the agreement, a program of activity. But, 
But if the agreement is ongoing uh, with uh, Total Productions, why then send out the invoice in as in a, a person's name rather than? No, the, 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 the agreement was is with Renault or TE. The invoicing, um, and obviously but, Ryan, but Ryan is, the is the service provider. We invoice on behalf of Ryan, and then. I know, but, but it, from a legal point of view, what I'm saying to you is that there seems to be two different legal entities: one Total Productions, the other one Ryan Turbury. No, there, there's uh, Ryan. But it's the just Ryan show, show that. So no, that's the the Renault and the Ryan Turbury invoice. There, there's only Total Productions, which is Ryan Turbury's company. Okay, all right. Can I then go on to in relation to the invoices itself? Um, when you saw who that you were making out to an English company or a company based in the UK, mm -hmm. did you not raise serious concerns on this, this issue? Because obviously, if it's made out to a UK company, you you're then not putting in for VAT or anything else. Yet the service was delivered in Ireland. We um, again under instruction from RTE. We. Why do I mean, in fairness, we, we you're, actually, you're a separate sorry, legal entity to RTE. But sorry, Should we, you not we, have, has, have asked uh, further questions on that? We, we sent the invoices into RTE. Yeah, but when you were asked to send in the invoices, you were asked to make out the invoices. When, you know, you were asked to make them out for a UK company, did it not raise concerns from your point of view as regards, you know, to make sure that she were not doing anything which was... Um, you know, where the service, in particular where the service was delivered here yeah. in Ireland, the service wasn't delivered in the UK. Sure. It was delivered to RT, to Renault, yeah. and, not, um, uh, and not to a UK company. Well, we knew that the contract was at Renault, and it was a separate contract for independent contractor services. Uh, Ryan had to do the work with RT, okay. and we understood that Ryan would have to do extra work with Renault, but there was no difference. Sorry, sorry. that's not the question. You're going completely off the question, doesn't it? that the deputy is trying to ask you. Deputy, just put that question straight again, because it's a very direct question. The direct question is, you it. know, when the invoice was made out, it was mm. made out to a UK yes. company. What I'm saying is that the service was delivered in Ireland yeah. for Irish companies, basically RTE and Renault, who are here in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Did that not raise concerns, which you, from an accounting point of view yourselves, that you were being asked now to bill a UK company? You say in your statement that she knew nothing about the barter account. You never dealt with a barter account before. This is yeah. the first time dealing with it. Did, it not, did you not raise questions as to why you should make it out to a UK company? OK, well, if I could just, in relation to that, uh, at the time, we didn't know who uh, asked us Well, was. that more reason for raising the question, no, if you didn't know we, about it? But we presumed that they had a relationship with Renault, and we followed the instructions exactly and subsequently got Did paid. Did you raise that question when Renault to know was was this the reason why? Was this the connection rather than sending it in? Remember, it was RT were giving you the instructions, not Renault. Therefore, should you not have raised that question? Well, we, again, we didn't raise the question. We didn't raise okay. the question because it was under instruction from RTE. Okay, can I just ask in relation to um, page in the Grant Thornton report, um, at, at paragraph uh, 22G, it raises the fact about that uh, the Director General was not involved in dealing, signing or implementation of this agreement, being the tripartite agreement. Mm. Was there? Because this seems to be, we're being uh, furnished certain names, but we're not being given all the names. And I'm just wondering, who exactly was there that knew about all of this agreement? <laughs> Sorry, so... OK, you, you were involved there, but who from RT was there that was involved in this agreement? So, um, from legal, Trish Whelan, from finance, Breed O'Keefe, uh, the CEO, um, D Forbes, and then somebody on the exec. The Grant Thornton report says the director general was not involved in the drafting, signing or implementation of this agreement. Oh, sorry, the drafting, signing implementation was would have been um, legal and finance and, and commercial. But can you tell us who was there from legal, financial, and commercial? In okay. Sorry, it was the OT solicitor's office. But no, no. But you're saying the commercial people were there as well. But who, who? We need to know who exactly was there because this information right. has not been given to us. You, Sorry. Your it, it, office, it's, it's, you were there, or your, someone from your office was there? Page, page 14. 
documents. So you had uh, myself, um, Neve, Fred O'Keefe, and Katrina Falkland from the RT Solicitor's Office. Sorry, who? My apologies. So, uh, Katrina Falkland. From the Solicitor's Office. From RT's Office, yes. And was there anyone office. else there? Um, that, uh, Trish Whelan from the Solicitor's Office as well. Okay, all right, okay. Can I just move on there um, to uh, Ryan Trouble to yourself, Mr. Trouble? Oh. Can I just ask, you know, this whole issue, and my colleague raised it about, you know, the, the level of fees, and I think when I looked at your accounts, it was uh, in 2016, the income through the accounts was 660,000, and I accept that there has been a reduction in what you're receiving, but all of this controversy, you mm -hmm. know, there's now a whole problem within, I suppose, the entire country, but also within RT about the whole issue of trust, the whole issue of the ethics of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking at it now, how do you feel that the trust can be built up, back up? And the second thing is about your own um, preference at this stage about going back working for RT. Yeah. What's your own... Oh, I, I don't have any doubt. I, I want to go back to work on the radio uh, as soon as possible. Um, I think that uh, I don't say that with with any arrogance. I just say that I've expressed des desires. It's what I do. It's it's what I know, and and I want to get back to my team and 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 to the listeners and and, and do my job you know, because the, it's all I've got. The whole issue in relation to the trust. No, I, I I understand that, deputy, and I, and I will say that I, I understand the, the the amount of money we're talking about is is is, is eye watering. I, I I like I'm, I'm not a fool. I understand that. But I haven't changed as a person over the over those years, despite the extraordinary well, bank The question I'm asking you is, how do you now rebuild that trust? Well, a lot of the trust was taken from me. But I don't. I, is, no, how, I don't. I how believe. How do we know? How do we know rebuild the trust? Well, I would First say of all, I, retrust. I, if you go back into RT, secondly, just the retrust in, over time. I would the, say the deputy, trust in RT the, itself. Yeah, I would say. Part, I would say believing it, as regards building the trust deputy, with, with your own colleagues. Just re transfer. I, I will just say I think that they're off to a good start this week with the new de director general. I think that they're going to be. Uh, I think that hopefully people will see what I've said today and will will hear what I'm saying today and they'll realise that a lot of what's happened over the last three weeks I've been dragged into a mess not of my own making. With your colleagues, Deputy Devlin. With my colleagues, the, uh, the only thing I have for my colleagues is respect. Deputy Devlin. I can thank you very much to our witnesses uh, for your attendance this morning. Uh, and can I say at the outset, um, you know, the, such is the issue surrounding this uh, that uh, you're right about uh, people stopping you. Obviously, we're living in the same area, uh, and I know uh, the high regard in which you're held uh, and the respect people have for you, including kids who are wondering why the toy man is being in the news uh, so much. Uh, that said, uh, obviously, I wonder, given the events over the last two weeks, uh, and we have engaged with RTE on quite a number of times, um, has that been the reason why you wanted to come here voluntarily? Or was it actually more uh, of what you heard from those um, engagements with RTE and what they've said, the various executives and board members? Uh, or has it been that everything else surrounding this whole issue? What's the main driver of you wanting to I be I think here? that my, my name has been desperately sullied. I think my reputation has been sullied. I'm deeply upset. I'm hurt. I am in... I'm, I'm, it's hard to leave the house, if you really, really want me to be honest about it. Um, so, for what? I spent three weeks watching people telling stories. And, just and, 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 and sorry, I'm sorry, I'm no, leaving no. a gap. I'm, I'm, forgive me, it's a comma, not a full stop. But I know, my, like, I'm not looking for sympathy now or, or, or violin. I, I'm simply saying to you, you, you asked me the, the question and you bring up, like, the kids. My relationship with the children of Ireland is so important to me. I know that sounds grandiose, but actually it is. I want them to be happy and hopeful and proud to be Irish and read lots of books and just be wonderful young people. You know, that, that doesn't change. You know, but what's happened in the last three weeks? It's like I, frenzy. I, can, I, can I specifically ask you then, in terms of what you've heard, and, and maybe to Mr. Kelly as well on this, uh, all of the evidence, and I presume you watched all of the evidence that's been given to both Oireachtas committees over the last couple of weeks. Uh, 
you know, even in uh, Mr. Tuberty's statement, uh, I think you refer to it as a fog of confusion. To me, it's a cloud of confusion at this point because there's what you're saying now contradicts, directly contradicts what this committee and others have been told over uh, the last couple of weeks by certain individuals. Uh, and that's extremely worrying, both from a parliamentary perspective, but also from a fact and truthful perspective. Bearing in mind, referring to your own statement, uh, Mr. Kelly, an institution of the Irish state uh, and those uh, representing it. Can I just turn to, um, can I turn to a, a few elements? One is in terms of the question around your decision, uh, Mr. Tuberty, and you, you said that you had been thinking about it long and hard, and obviously I can appreciate why it would be such a big decision. Yeah. Um, but is there any evidence, uh, and I, it's not that I doubt your your decision or when you make your decision, Please don't. but for clarity in terms of the public domain, yes. is there any correspondence predating uh, kind of this scandal. April, May, yeah. The Ortiz is there scandal. Between the two of you, just and it's yeah. not that I want to publish, but I just want to clear the record. Is there anything that his text messages, emails, anything that's saying, you, you look, know, this but, is coming up? Or... But, but, sorry, Daphne. We asked to come here today. I we asked that. to come here today. Yeah. We weren't invited. We asked. And we saw, over the last three weeks, I've never seen such horrendous, horrendous reporting. And why suddenly the most trusted man in Ireland, Ryan Tuberty, it was like, throw him under a bus. What? Why? Why? When that report came out, the first report came out that was sent out from the board on the 22nd. Yeah, this is the statement. Yeah, the statement. Yeah. We had to ask our lawyers, can we get a copy? Because again, we're on the back foot. When Ortiz said at the top 10 earners, again, we get 10 minutes. And again, I had to put in a request, can we please have the information? And again, so, so we, 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 got, we got the statement. And when we got the statement, half an hour before it went out, we said, there's inaccuracies in this. And Grant Thornton said there was no wrongdoing on behalf of Ryan Tuberty and Old Kelly. Everything was... Important. We asked them to put it in, and they didn't. Four days later, it was... Sorry, sorry if I could just answer. Four days later, it, it, was, it was put in, right? And four days later, Ryan Tuberty was taken off the air. He didn't have a show on Friday. He wasn't on the show the following week. It looked like he was complicit in this whole... Mm -hmm. Ortier, mess, mess. So, so, so I, 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 I'm sorry. We, we, we have. This has been. This has been the worst of times. The worst of times. No, I appreciate, I appreciate that, and I, I know that's why you're here. But and that's, you, and that's I, exactly. I'd like to add. We, people have families. Yeah. Just I think. It. People yeah. need to think about. I mean, you got your public representative. You know what it means when you're in the middle of something. I get that. No, I'm not. This is my first rodeo being in the public eye, but I've never seen anything like it. I, I don't know if any of you have been cancelled yeah, before, but let me tell you, you don't want to be yeah. there. So, so, just, just, so just in terms of... So, okay. So can I, can well, we can I, talk about can that I, later. Can I ask you then, uh, just in terms, of, in terms of the, I suppose, the statements that have been made, both the physical statements and indeed the oral statements that have been made in the House of the Oireachtas, uh, you've alluded to um, one of the inaccuracies, uh, Mr. Tuberty, you say about the secretly overpay, overpayment by RTE. Which you said, which you challenged back in 2020. Was that in writing? That challenge? Yes, wasn't. We have to. Yes. We have to. It's okay. in your documents. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in your, okay. it's in your documents there's, because there's a lot of documents. Yes. No, I appreciate that. No, I, 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 listen, I do appreciate the lot of documents. I mean, but that's why we've been working on this so long. You have it in writing. That's sure all I want to understand. We have it in writing, and we went back and we actually asked. And can I also? Okay, can I just also get a time frame then in terms of uh, the negotiation of uh, Mr. Tuberty's first contract? Uh, did that started probably in 2014? Was it? Sorry, the 15 contract would have started probably end of 14. Yeah, yeah, 14. yeah end of okay. 14. And, 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 then the, the, and that the, ran to 2020. And then there was fresh negotiations yes, around that. Okay. Which, yeah, when did the started. negotiation start for the Renault contract? Which would have ran parallel with the 2020 contract. So it would have started probably late 19. So you can, so. See, where, you can see where the confusion then, or the cloud of confusion, or what a fog of confusion. Uh, arises when people say, well, the two of them are running parallel to sure. each other and one has a 20% pay cut and the other one has a... Sure, subject. sure. Okay. So, so if, if, can, can I just answer, please? For, for please, please, because I'm under time pressure. I know, but it, it, you asked me a question. Yeah. Um, within, that, within that time frame, very simply, um, we had, as I said, we had agreed to the 120 gone. We'd agreed to 525,000 not to be invoiced. Um, we didn't, we didn't go out printing that. And, and I appreciate what you're saying in a fog. Like, there's so much confusion. I, like, I, 
If I sit in where we're sitting. Yeah, no, I mean, if you're, no, if you're finding I, your, your okay, computer, we've just, been can so I just ask you though, everything that's okay, been Okay, that's fine. Last, thank you for that. Can I just also weeks. say to you, in terms of the invoicing, I yeah. hear what you say, you, you did what you were told. Yes. There was an email there in the pack that you provided Absolutely. saying, also mention all this information yeah. on the invoice. Uh, now, Astus, I think, is the name of the company that yes. you were told to invoice from. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever meet any representative from Astus? No. Or was this just a new company that you were told to invoice? This was a company we were told to invoice. And that wasn't invoice. really questioned at all on your part, though, no. either. No. So, so if RT asked you to pay you know, news talk, would you have done that too? I mean, that's no, the question. I, I so it, where, it's, where is it? I'm being it's, facetious it's, because I'm just asking. All of a sudden, a new company, you're negotiating with RTE on a contract. You're told to pay, you're told to invoice a different sure. company you've never heard of. Yeah. Where did that come about and how come there's no question that, about that? That, 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 came, that came from RTE. I know, I get that. But why, why wasn't there a RTE. question about who am I invoicing? You know, I'm negotiating with RTE and now I'm invoicing Joe Bloggs. Wait, I, I, I've worked personally with RTE for 23 years. I'd never have questioned working with RTE. And did they ever ask you to invoice a company you never heard of? We had ne we had never done a roadshow like this before. No, no, but so this, in, so this in your is negotiations, the first time. so we, I, I assumed that it was a re it was it was Renault. Okay, and in terms of that Zoom call then, so the seventh of May, with right? With Forbes and RT Lawyers. Okay, and so were they the solicitors that you're talking about, the Trish yes. Whelan and Couture? So there was three three representatives from RTE, two from the solicitor's office and the DG. No, sorry, no, the, there was there was one from the solicitor's office, the DG, and myself, and then a colleague of mine. A colleague of yours, yeah. so it was on your side. Okay, and can I just ask then, in terms of, um, just in the last minute or so I have, in terms of the toy show, the musical, because we've heard a lot about this, and we've heard there was 2.2 .2 million loss. Now, I sure. know it's not your, Mr. Kelly, I know you're not directly involved, uh, but you're an agent, obviously, on behalf of Mr. Tuberty. But Mr. Tuberty obviously worked with, or works with RTE. Can I please um, answer that one? Well, can, we haven't got the best Well, can I, can I ask this, though? Yes. Were there staff members from the toy, sh from the Late Late uh, Show, um, seconded to the musical, uh, be it production staff, uh, other uh, personnel from RTE directly working on Toy Show the Musical. I, uh, the, toy, the Toy Show, sorry, Toy Show the Musical was something I had nothing to do with. So I, I know, but I are think you aware only, of anybody? I think it's only fair to say that you should put those questions to well, people have, in RTE yeah, about yeah. that, because in fairness, like I, 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 that's not that was not my. my You're not aware uh, of any staff that were no, seconded to uh, from RTE to the Toy Show the no, Musical. No, there might have been people working in parallel, but seconded is probably too strong a word. Okay, okay, uh, okay. And then just in the last uh, couple of seconds, can I just ask, uh, probably Mr. Tuberty, given that you're the face, as was said earlier, of, of this issue. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's been unfortunate. Yeah, so in terms of everything you've heard uh, from uh, your former colleagues in, in RTE, directors and executives, yeah. um, what has been the biggest inaccuracy that you've heard that you say, I, I know you've highlighted seven, but is there any one in particular that you want to highlight in on? Uh, this afternoon. I think seven is quite enough. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Deputy John Brady, 10 minutes. Uh, I'd like to welcome our, our witnesses here um, this morning before the, the, the committee, and hopefully uh, this meeting will go some way towards getting uh, transparency, something that I, I think has been uh, you know, missing up until uh, this point. I, I just want to establish a, a, a timeline, a, a clear timeline as to who knew what and when. Um, so we know on, on, on March uh, the 3rd, uh, Mr Tuberty, you had uh, stated when, when questioned um, about your um, ongoing uh, position with the, the Late Late Show as to whether you will continue or not. You said, I don't know where this is coming from. The story comes up every uh, year or two. I am here talking to you today with a view to go straight back into the job I love. Yes. So that, that that's correct. You, you, no, you I know said. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. In fact, um, I remember well that interview, and I can I can fill you in on all the details you okay. want when you no, want. There's them. no need to know. Yeah. But that, that that's accurate. March the third, yeah. March the seventh. Uh, we know uh, from questioning that uh, Deloitte first contacted uh, Richard Collins, uh, the chief financial officer. I, I think that has been established. It's it's not uh, disputed. Uh, we know Mr. Uh, Collins then on March the eighth um, yeah. contacted D Forbes. Yeah. Um, to get to the bottom as to the nature of, of those two um, invoices that we know had, had been issued. That's not up, up for uh, dispute. Now, it was suggested, um, or it was stated, that a meeting took place uh, between Mr Kelly um, and someone within RTE uh, the week beginning of, of the 6th of March um, of, of this year. Would you, do you recall meeting someone? No, I, I know, I mean, as I said, the only meetings I had with 
uh, Ms Forbes were in the OT boardroom with her and her lawyers and her accountants and we had a Zoom call. That was it. Okay. Did, it was uh, stated that you met with Alan Tyler from RTE uh, the week beginning the, the 6th of March? No, no recollection of that. You have no, no recollection of, of that? No. no? Okay. Um, so, can, can I ask Mr Tuberty, when, when did you notify RTE that you were going oh, to... Sorry, be sorry, uh, sorry. Alan Tyler. Alan Tyler. Yes. You're talking to somebody else? Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. I'll Alan, come back to you if you want to go back to that question yeah, first. Sorry. Yeah, Alan Tyler, the new head of entertainment. Yeah. Yes. You met with him on what date? I would have met with him quite a few times when he started. In March, what, what date? Uh, I'm not really sure. I, I, I'd... And what was the, the, the purpose of, 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 of that meeting? Yeah. If you could just su suggest, just to maybe by way of being helpful, just if you have your diary, which it may be, that you could just check that actually, during, during sorry, the break. I don't. No, uh, just if you could, or if you could have somebody check it during yeah. the break. Oh, yeah. We'll break him for 10 minutes. Continue. No, I, I, I think it'd be important that we establish when uh, you met with him yeah. in, in, in March. It was dated the Mar March the 6th, and I, I think it's um, important in terms no, of the, the It was the, uh, the, the 13th? That no, you're, you're, I, I, Deputy, can I ask you what, what, what you're... Sorry, what is the question? I, I, I'm just wondering when he met with um, yeah, Mr. With Mr. Tyler. OK, Alan we'll Tyler. find that out for you during okay. the break. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. And Mr. Tubley, when, when did yeah. you inform RTE you were... Stepping down? Well, Noel, on my behalf, informed RT on March the 13th. And March that's 13th. right. OK. Um, on the same day, you announced publicly that you were going to be um, stepping back from the Late Late Show. No, that was... You're talking about that interview, that, that, that uh, a few weeks before, where I was at an event in... Do you want me to go into this, or...? No, you no, stated I, publicly I, on March the, uh, sorry, March the 16th that, that, that you were uh, going to be uh, stepping back. Uh, when, when did you notify your RTE of your 13th. decision? The 13th. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, my apologies. The 13th okay. to RTE and um, the 16th to the public. So, can, can, can I ask, had anyone in RTE notified you, Mr Tuberty, no. or you, Mr Kelly, no. of...? I'm, the concerns that the lawyer has. No, can, can, no. I, can I answer? I, I, really, I really must, Deputy. Uh, I have to. Because we can be here till the last... Yeah, 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 yes or no? Because time is unfortunate. Well, you know what? I yeah, yes or no? Did anyone from RTE... I, I need a little time, time to, time. forgive me, but I will be here till the last dog barks until you believe me that that decision came from my heart and soul that started being that decision. The kernel of it was last... August. Okay. So, so we can talk so, about so, timelines so yes no. and dates and, and from grant RTA? pointing and everything else. This just, was a just, very just, personal decision. Okay. Just, okay. So can you answer the question then? The question. Did anyone yes. from RTE contact either you, Mr Tuberty, or you, Mr Kelly, about uh, the review that the had not initiated? Till not till May. Not till May. Not till May. Correct. Not till May. Can I ask just in terms of the... I was the one who went in. Can I ask in terms of the tripartite agreement, which was wasn't signed until the 21st of the 4th, yeah. uh, 2023, yeah, yeah. A, a month after, a month and a half after the issue was, was first sure. I, I identified uh, by the light. Why, why was that why was only that? signed because um, the, at that stage? Because the agreement originally was supposed to be for 2020, the first first lot of events, but then that was COVID, then it went to 21, that was COVID. So finally 22, we did the first number of events. So as a result, the, you know, it wasn't signed to the... the okay, so, so we're expected to believe that it's purely coincidental that a month and a half after Deloitte identified these, you know, questionable invoices that you, you take this down off the shelf when everything had hit the fan and you retrospectively uh, sign it um, a couple of years after the, 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 the contract had, had taken place. And that's just pure coincidental. If I could just answer. Yep. Um, the invoices were, um, in, were sent to RTE. They sent them to Astus. Okay, I'm, we ju I'm just, I'm just asking about this, at, at the tripartite agreement, in fairness, yeah. no, Mr Kelly. Yeah. Um, so it's purely coincidental that that was taken down off the shelf and signed in April, um, a, a month and a half after uh, Deloitte raised these concerns. Well, the agreement, the three people in the agreement is Renault, RTE, and we were a separate agreement just to, to provide services. So, just want to make that make that clear. Okay. So, was, so, so, was, so the services were turned over, and, and it's actually more of, a, I suppose, 
what will okay, happen. I'm not, I'm not the guys who will be there, how many people will be there. So what, you know, it's an operational so, thing, really. Okay, so, so you're leading us to believe it was pure coincidence that that, that, that was signed in uh, April, um, a month after Delight raised these issues and a number of years after the, 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 the contract had been uh, formed or, or uh, come about. So can I just so, ask sorry, in, on, in, 18th, in relation... on the 18th of April, um, page 35 in the pack. Um, Neve, thank you for calling this morning. Email below. It's the one I mentioned refers to the third side letter, which you don't seem to have on file. We don't seem to have a fully signed copy with Renault. Um, we signed it later. The first contact uh, with... Uh, sorry, but the first contact, we weren't concealing any issue. It okay. was just a Renault. Okay. It was just a Renault can, can, can I just ask, in, in, in relation to uh, the uh, commercial contract, that you, you, you say it was uh, Breed O'Keefe who, who came up with the, uh, the idea of this uh, commercial contract? That put contract. it forward first. Yeah. And is, is that a, a normal thing, or would this be unusual in terms of your uh, to, negotiating to, on behalf of. To be, to be honest, I would. I would uh, that's an OTE thing. I, I, I don't know how, you know. Okay, the people that you represent. Would it be normal that RTE would put forward proposals uh, for a commercial element to be part of, of uh, the contract? Would that be well, normal or an exception? It would be exceptional, and this is exceptional, because Ryan, as the host of The Late Late Show, and Renault as the sponsor of The Late Late Show, and The, RTE, and, and the Late Late Show being owned by RTE, um, it is... It is yeah, it's a unique. It's an except. No, no, no other cases uh, of any of the other no. people. No, no, no other no. cases. Um, so... In, 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 in relation to uh, the invoicing then, um, that we, we, we know there was a, an attempt um, and there's a, a trail there that no names were to appear on the invoices. Uh, whose uh, suggestion was it to uh, label them as a consultancy fees? RTE. RTE, yeah. Who in RTE um, informed you to put them down as uh, consultancy fees? Geraldine O'Leary. Ger Geraldine yeah. O'Leary. Um, okay, in the, uh, the Grant Thornton uh, review, it, it states very clearly that there was no consultancy fees provided, uh, either by the talent or, or, or the talent's agents, um, and it did not uh, reflect the substance of, of the transactions. Um, can I ask you, um, the Chief Financial Officer under questioning uh, last week, um, when he asked in, in, in relation to uh, these invoices, um, the legality of them, he stated that it was in his view uh, that the public had been defrauded um, because uh, of, of the labelling of uh, these invoices. So you clearly followed the instructions uh, of Jardine O'Leary uh, to... I would suggest purposely um, confuse the true nature of uh, the invoices and what was being billed for. W would you agree with the Chief Financial Officer that the public has uh, been potentially uh, defrauded uh, because of, of uh, the issuing of these invoices by yourself and the payment uh, by RTE of the 275,000? At all times, we were acting under instruction from RTE, as I've already stated. Okay, but would you um, agree with the Chief Financial Officer yeah, yeah. that uh, the uh, taxpayer has been potentially defrauded because um, there was no consultancy fees uh, provided? Um, Again, this was it under instruction from RTE. Okay, but you, you, who, who, who issued the invoices? Who issued the invoices to RTE? Who issued the invoices? Yeah. We, we sent invoices to RTE, which RTE then... You, you, you issued the invoices yeah. labelled consultancy fees, knowing that there was no consultancy fee provided. Exactly, so we acted under instruction from you, RTE you, you at all times. You issued them. Want to go before the break? No. Okay. No, because I was prepared no, for a break. We, have, we, we can agree to, uh, to spend briefly for 10 minutes, or you can wait till we take another speaker. Which sort of committee you want to do? Take another one. Take another, take another one? Speaker, okay, Deputy Well, you said Ronan. half 12 before taking a break, Deputy, here, so. I'm happy to do whatever suits anyone. Yeah, Deputy, suits. no, we have to break for 10 minutes. Yeah. Will we take a break? Yeah. Take a break. Yeah, take a break. Okay, so yeah. the yeah. meeting is suspended for 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Resume in public session. Okay, we're back in public session. Um, just in relation to the checking the date in that diary uh, and the meeting with the with the member with his member staff in RT, did you clarify that during the yes. break? There was a meeting with um, Alan Tyler and Tyler. Jim and Jennings, who um, will be head of sort of programme and content. Alan Tyler is uh, our head of entertainment. Okay. Yeah. 6th of March. So we had a meeting. And the date of the, the date of it, that was the date. Yes, yes, yes. Is what? 6th of March. 6th of March was that date. Okay, thank you. Next committee member is Deputy Verona Murphy. Thank you, Chair. And just in relation to that meeting, Mr. Kelly, was the topic Grant Thornton brought up? No, thank you. Uh, the topic was um, issues around, uh, I suppose, well, really, the Late Late Show timings on the start. During COVID, the Late Late Show finished at 11 o'clock. Well, so the issues were around... And I don't mean yeah. to cut you off, but you're, you're just categorically stating that there was Oh, sorry, a sorry, yes, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, it was okay. very much about issues around the Late Late Show and trying to finish it earlier, um, okay. etc. OK, thank you. Um, but it does seem a bit odd that you'd have been having that discussion, given Mr Tuberty's resignation or was it just for the remaining shows no it, it was before it was before and it wasn't it, it wasn't related to it um okay maybe it, you do you want to talk about yeah, well, no you, were you at that meeting yes i was yeah okay but it had nothing to do, as you're categorically saying, there was I, I, no discussion. Deputy Murphy, like I said at the, at, at the statement of the outset, it was one of the, the untruths I really, really wanted to clear up here today. And there was no, no, no connection between this fiasco and my departure from the Late Late Show. I promise you. So you'll have watched all of the previous engagements. So is it your view, yes. Mr. Tuberty? Mm -hmm. And it's hard, like, I don't know, like, look, at first start, I'd like to say you're welcome here. Thank you for and it's for nice that. that you came without having to be compelled. Thank you. But I think Thank you. it's not that anybody knows how to address you because we're so everybody feels they know you. I know. So I prefer if you call me Ryan, but I, I well, understand that's like not the nature of it. When you call me deputy, okay. but even all that aside, okay. it's superfluous. But the reality is this: you will have seen Mr. Adrian Lynch, who was the um, interim director general, yes. say that it was possible that you did know pre your. Announcement. Yes, that's very unfortunate. And do you feel, is it your view then, mm -hmm. that Mr Lynch threw you under the bus with that connotation? I, Mr Lynch is entitled to his conjecture, um, but in this case it's incorrect. Okay. Well, let me move to your statement, because you have outlined seven untruths. And to be fair, you've come here to give your side of the story, and we as deputies need to hear both sides and find the truth in between. But I think you have outlined in your statement seven on truths. Mm -hmm. And what I'd just like to ask you, is it your view, and maybe this is for Mr. Kelly also, but is it your view that those on truths were intended to deceive not just the public, but the Public Accounts Committee into thinking that you two gentlemen were responsible for everything that has happened here? I think we, being frank with you, we, we, were, we watched some of the proceedings uh, quite aghast. But is it your view that those untruths were intended to deceive? I would hope that in, 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 a, in a more positive moment that, it, that that wasn't the case, that this is a misunderstanding rather than an intent to deceive. I, I would hope, but maybe Noah has something better to say about that. Um, <coughs> I may not please be as kind as Ryan. Um, and I think there were a lot of misunderstandings. I think, as Ryan said at the outset, if everybody had just, at the start, and when we, when we had to ask, can we get the statement, everybody just had sat down and said, what is that, what is this? Yeah. It's all there, it would have been explained. The, hun the 120,000, there was no 120,000, and, and, and on and on and on. Well, just in your case, Mr Kelly, at some point, Mr Collins was being asked um, in relation to why he did not ask questions with regard to the invoices being raised with consultancy fees sure. as the, the uh, description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that because, and I don't want to misquote, but sure. the inclination, the intimation was that yourself and D Forbes yes. had a particularly, he was aware that you had a particularly close relationship. Yes. Now that's yes. not what you said earlier. No, as I said, I've never even had a cup of tea with her. 
like literally, so I, you I, I've be... only, and I, I've only, sorry, I've only ever met her with her lawyers and her accountants, and you only ever meet the DG, and, well, and, and as wait... the previous DG, when there's something that. But in your view, why would either Mr. Collins be of that I don't opinion, know that. or why would he express it? I in have that no regard? idea whatsoever. And do, do, but in your view, then, do you believe that he intended to deceive this committee? I, I honestly can't say. I don't know. And, and to be honest with you, like the, there were so many untruths, I just had to stop looking and listening. You know, we were we were under siege, <laughs> like unreal, unreal. Well, I think clearly from the notes we've received, and I know we received them late this morning, they're quite comprehensive yes. in discarding what you believe to be untruths. Like your definition, my definition of an untruth is a lie. It's a lie. If it's sure. not true, it's sure. a lie. Sure. So are you able to say in your view that RTE lied to this committee and those representing them. Well, as you said, they were untruths. Well, just, well I, I think that... Be careful with language. Well, I think I, I don't need to be careful, Chair, because the definition of an untruth is... Do you wish to answer that, Mr Kelly, please, Mr Corbyn? <clears throat> I think there's been a lot of lies, intentional or not, I don't know. Sorry, can you yeah. just repeat that again? I think there have been a lot of lies, uh, and that's why we're here, intentional or not. I, I don't know. I, 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 like, again, I, I, I don't know half of these people. I, I've, I, I, I've barely met them. Would it, would, it, would it be fair to say that, given that we've outlined our side of the story today, I would love the people to, to decide what the definition of a truth or mistruth or a lie is, in the sense that I, I would hope that they see some, they get some clarity today. Well, on that, Mr. Tuberty, do you and has there been pre-litigation letters issued on your behalf, both of your behalves, Not at this I'm point? Aware. No, I don't not at this no. point. That's, no, I, that's no for the clarity. Answer. Yes, <laughs> thank you. No, no thank you. No. And I just, well, then I, I just want to clarify a number of things. Patri you, you named Trish Whelan, mm -hmm. Mr. Kelly. Yeah. Did Trish Whelan work for your office? Or? No, Trish Whelan works is uh, RTE legal. RTE Legal and Katrina Fallon? Uh, she's in the legal department as well. In RTE. Both in RTE, RTE Legal? On RTE, yeah. Okay. And just, I want to go back because I, I've been trying to put myself in D Forbes' shoes sure. for the past couple of weeks. Sure. Um, I just want you to give me an outline pre the 19th of December. Is there any contemporaneous note of what gave rise to that email or that meeting that took place beforehand? We start, if I'm not mistaken, on the 19th of December with, with your documents. Oh, sir. And it's proposed terms for new contract, and that's on the 19th of December. But I'm just, I'm just looking from that perspective where you, where the starting point was that gave rise to the commercial relationship, the seventy-five thousand commercial relationship. Yeah, sorry, I, I was just looking for the. What, so what's what's the exact question? So the sorry. question is, what if I was D yeah. Forbes? Yeah. I'm trying in my head to figure out what it was that you put to D Forbes that you say RTE came up with the plan, the sure. scheme, to give 75,000. Yeah. Like, what gave rise to it? So, um, the sponsor, uh, RTE's probably biggest sponsor, and, and, and RTE wanted these events. So they came with the idea of the events, when they'd, like where they'd happen, when they'd happen, Mini Late Lake Roadshow, Ryan Trubbery Renault uh, Associations. Okay, Comple so, so, so co completely, RTE. Completely separate, um, completely separate to, to, the, uh, to the contract, um, okay. to, to Ryan's radio and TV contract. We, um, and sorry, and the first three were done in year three because of COVID, and then obviously this contractually, uh, there's still another six out. So was it the position that had that 75,000 not been on the table that Mr Tuberty would have walked from his contract? Not at all. No. no. Ryan, Ryan has other contracts, as I said, with, with BBC, he'd cover for different people on BBC, and he'd have his book contracts. So there was no that. pressure put on Ms Forbes in which there was another... Not you so. know, you didn't say... Mr. Tuberty has been offered a job no, no, in no. BBC, and, 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 and if no, we don't no, do not at all. A, B or C. And, and, and actually, <laughs> quite the opposite. It was at that, at those meetings, Ryan 
took 105,000 euro pay cut per annum. So that right. was the 525,000. So if we were looking, if that was the pressure point, um, you wouldn't have reduced. And you know, we've heard that. So I'm just trying to ascertain why Ms Forbes would give away effectively 75,000 euros, with, which if really was RTE's public revenue. But, or you, would but, you see, but you see it actually. So if I can just explain. Um, so. Well, the invoices were made out to ASTIS. They were directly emailed to RTE, and that's uh, what was necessary to process them with ASTIS. Um, well, they're uh, much further on. I'm trying yeah, to ascertain no, no, no. why the, she the, would have entered. So, sorry, so the first round of the invoice was, was, was Renault. Um, but why she would... So why she would enter into an agreement? Well, if, if there was... Why she, first of all, gave a guarantee yeah. just, just, and what was at the back of... We're, we're going over time. Just yeah, if you I, your question. I mean, essentially, that was in case the sponsor... Again, the sponsor relation is with RTE, not with us. And for me, what that was about was if there was a new sponsor in, that during the duration of the contract, that we would be able to work with the, with, with the next sponsor. Thank but it was never an RTE payment. It was Renault, and Renault were always paying the invoice. It was never meant to be RT to pay this, ever. Yes, but to receive it back in terms of the, the way the deal was constructed, the benefit of that 75,000. But, but yeah, you've I, contradicted, I, by the way, what Dee Forbes has told us in the Public Accounts Committee previously, back over the last few years, that the reason that they had to, to pay, pay these fees is because the talent, the stars, would walk. But I don't, I don't want to divert to that. Deputy well, Alan I'm, Dillon, 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Cahirlach, and I'd like to welcome our witnesses uh, joining us today, and thanks for being here. Mr Kelly, you, you said today that Mr Tuberty is being made the poster boy uh, for this payment scandal. Why is that the case? Why is that the case? Well, intentionally or unintentionally, I, 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 as I said, when, when the board and RT released the statement, um, without consulting us, without having to ask for it, and then not acknowledging that there was no wrongdoing, taking him off air, then he was the face. He was the face of it. Do you? And, and, do you and, 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 that, and that's where it started, and, and it's been working in this in its own vacuum for the last two and a, two, two and a half weeks. Where that's why we wanted to come in, we want to talk to you, we want to tell you everything that we know, because it's been very hard looking at s so many untruths. Do you, Deputy being told. Yeah, do you accept responsibility that your actions have been reckless in nature when dealing with RT on this matter? No, I don't. We have just always followed process of every single time. RT is a 350 million euro organisation. The 100, sorry, in 2021, 190 million was licensed so, fee, so, and, so, and so 100, Mr. Kelly, sorry, 140 so Mr. Kelly, million was, so Mr. was commercial. Sorry, so, Mr. Kelly. Let me let me so, ask the next like, question. So you're trying to put the sole blame on RTE here? Is in that relation correct? to? In relation to this payment scandal? Yes, completely. And does it not take two to tango, Mr Kelly? But we were just following process. We were, we were just working under instructions from RTE. OK, so, so does it suit you um, and your client to keep things ambiguous? Because we've heard a lot of um, statements already, uh, muddy in the water per se, when things become difficult, you can place the blame back onto RT management. I think that's what's happening. That's what's um, happened in this area. Th this, I, I think, uh, as you know, we came ourselves here today. This is the first time we've had we've, we, we've had to actually, a chance to actually talk. If it's any ambiguity, it's uh, it's on RT side. I think what we've set out Mr. is Mr. Kelly. You, I, I think what you, we've set out is an answers. You to, have been engaging with RT for the past 23 years. Yes. Is that correct? How many people do you represent? Um, the top ten, three. That's all. There's another agent that represents the other, the other seven. So, in relation to the the raising of the invoices described for consultancy fees, I just want to clear up this mm -hmm. matter. You stated previously that Geraldine O'Leary and RT were responsible. Yes. How is that? Because it was under instruction from them. Okay. Because so the, again, the relationship with RT is, is with, so, so with Renault. We have nothing to do with okay. Renault. So, so, so Mr. Kelly, you were you were following instruction. Yes. So therefore, did you con collude with RTE in a falsehood of concealment of them invoices by labelling them, yeah. labelling them consultancy fees? <coughs> That's a straightforward question, Mr. Kelly. I'm so, sorry. Could, could you just? You said you were following instructions. Yes. Okay. So therefore, did you collude with RTE in a falsehood? 
of concealment by describing them invoices for consultancy fees? Um, I said that we had no benefit in seeking to suppress knowledge of any payments. But this, was, this was fraudulent accounting practices. And we certainly didn't do any fraudulent accountancy. But, but you followed instruction. You never raised, this alarm bells never, were never raised amongst you representing your client in relation to these invoices. Sure. Again, as I said, we're a small company of eight people. They have three, they have, they're, they're massive, they have accountants, they have auditors, they have lawyers. But just, to, just in relation so, to the I mean, invoices. Like we're just following under instruction and I had no reason not to believe them. The former, no reason not the to former believe them. CFO, in his opinion, described these as defrauding the taxpayer. Do you agree with that assessment? I didn't, I didn't even hear that he said that again. Do you still see these invoices related to consultancy fees? These, inv these invoices were as instructed. As, as instructed. instructed. And what were they for? What was the nature of They were for three, every, a minimum of three so late, did, late did, shows. Did they style. describe what they were intended for? They were, so in the first invoice, as you can see, we were instructed by RT what to put in it, and the second invoice, the third invoice. We were just following process. Do you accept the lack of complete credibility to invoice a company you never heard of in a different country for work undertaken here in Dublin? I, I think the lack of credibility is on, our, on RTE's side. On RTE's side? Definitely. So how, how many other deals were done with RTE, uh, with your business, Mr Kelly, when asked to use a company from abroad that you've never heard of before. This, this the road shows, the road shows were unique because it was late, late Ryan, Renault, or TE. Mr. Kelly, you're not taking any responsibility for the oversight here of Mr. Tuberty's earnings, are you? In relation to what we've actually been told in this committee room. I don't understand what you mean by oversight. Are you of taking earnings? any any responsibility in relation to the oversight of the dealings with Mr. Tuberty in relation to these invoices? You you said you followed instruction. Yes. From RTE. Yeah, yeah. But your responsibility is on behalf of your client. Did you not proof yeah. test each of the steps that were required? My responsibility is absolutely on my client's behalf, and that's and and that's what we do. Mr. Tuberty, you said in your statement, and you emphasised the importance of truth, uh, the full truth, and you, you, you stated that the full truth was concealed. Okay? So in your opinion, and after what we've listened to from Mr. Kelly, do you believe, who do you believe was responsible for concealing the truth? I believe the person sitting to my left, and what he tells me, I believe. And, and what he's told you, I believe. In your opinion, do you think That's your right. agent colluded with RTE to conceal these payments? No. I think my agent did what, what he was instructed to do by RTE. Mr. Tuberty, your earnings went up by €75,000 in 2020, credited from Reynolds, on a side deal, and then you received another €150,000 in 2022, underwritten at the request by RTE. Yes. So. Am I, am I missing something here? At, at a time between April 2020 mm. and July 2020, yes. when we were in the middle of a pandemic, yes. where you had taken a 20% pay cut on yes. your contract, which was signed the 1st of April, yes. and th that these side deals were undertaken yes. at a time where the country was going through huge um, difficulty, yes. and you feel that these payments should not have been put into the public domain. I, 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 I was under the understanding that the payments had come from Renault, a very, very, yeah. com very successful commercial company. So I didn't feel that it was an RTE situation. Separate contract. Even though, a RTE, separate, and separate two, even yeah. though RTE, as we've heard from your agent, was responsible for the payment of these invoices. We, we were paid. We weren't paid by RTE. We were paid by Asus and our, we assumed that that was from Renault. Yeah. That's the misunderstanding. And that's the misunderstanding. Like, Renault paid the first one under instruction, or to asked us to, to send out the other ones, and so, we were paid by Asus. So, so can I ask again, who, who suggested the side deal of any description? I, I don't know what you mean by a side deal. The tripartite agreement. That was RTE. RTE. And who wanted the underwriting in the first instance? Well, the underwriting, as I said, was simply about if the sponsor changed, if the sponsor changed. That's all. We never assumed RTE would be paying for anything. 
if the sponsor changed, that we'd be able to re-engage with the sponsor. The relationship with the sponsors with RTE, we know you're not allowed, we weren't allowed near it. We have never worked with Renault before. We only worked with them on this. So, At a time, Mr Toberty, you looked for uh, written assurances uh, in relation to any further pay cuts in your 2020 contract. It, it, did, you, did you seek a written letter in relation to that? My, as no, I, he didn't. I did. I did, because having taken €105,000 per year by five, 525, and not accepting the 120000 that he that he was he was due in contract, I just said, look, you cannot, when is a contract a contract? A contract is only a contract when it's actually agreed and honoured on both sides. RTE claimed that they've completely rejected the claim uh, of underwriting the Renault tripartite agreement. Do you accept what they say in relation to that. Well, I bring you to the, 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 the most important email here today is on, um, sorry, sorry, page 10 of our book. And in it, it says, um, and this is from the previous CFO, we made good, press, good progress on what the commercial agreement would be. We have to agree to one in Dublin, two outside Dublin, again, all directed from, or, all from RTE, what date is on that, Mr Kelly? So um, that was 20th of February 2020, which are, so that was which, are sorry, which are RTE led late, late show events. We can provide you with the side letter to underwrite this fee for the duration of the contract. And the underwriting wasn't about finding, we never, it never, like how would we know RTE were going to be paying for it? What the letter was about was if the contractor, if the, if the sorry, if the sponsor changed, that we would be able to work with you, the sponsor. Thank you. Deputy yeah. McAuliffe. Thank you very much, uh, look and to the witnesses. And look, I, I should start from the outfit by saying we have a very clean, clear remit at the Public Accounts Committee to get to the bottom of what's happening. And certainly your presence here today is very welcome. You've provided additional information, uh, and I, I thank you for that. Um, I also want to note, Mr Tuberty, that um, uh, in your opening statement, you say you have great credibility or you have great respect for the uh, institutions of this house, and I think that statement has great credibility. I've listened to you for a long, long time, uh, and I appreciate uh, uh, those comments. It's important. The, dif the difficulty that we have is is that, for whatever reason, something happened here, and essentially, RTE reduced its income by seventy five thousand euro, and in, tor in turn, seventy five thousand euro was paid to Total Productions. Um, was, yeah, it was paid to Total Productions, albeit for additional duties on your behalf. So whether you, whether, who knew what and when is really important because that is essentially what happened. €75,000 of a credit note was given to Renault. In return, 75000 was given to your production company and you did additional, additional duties. So it's really important that we know who and what, and that is why some of the information you've given us is, sure. is really crucial. You've said very clearly that one of the truths you wish to lift is that you're an independent contractor, and I accept that. But would you accept that this arrangement with RTE um, is not like work you've uh, gathered from other companies, like the BBC and so on? In essence, RTE facilitated it, it introduced it to their clients, they were party to the agreement, they, uh, the show, fo the events followed the late, late format, which is mentioned in in in, in the agreement. Um, RTE paid for the the staging and the catering and so on. So it's not fair to compare this this contract with other contracts that yeah. you gain entirely separately. Would sure. you would you accept that? Yeah, that's a fair observation. Yeah, okay. And so the suggestion is is that RTE created this arrangement yes. in order to bolster your income. Do you accept, do you, do you, do you accept I, I, that? I understand that? why you'd say that, but I, I can't accept it as a matter of fact, because it's, I think it is, is it fair to say that, that we would, as an independent contractor, you do different jobs for different companies? Yeah. Like, so, I've, for example, I've written a couple of books, with, albeit, you know, one kid, a couple of kids' books, I don't know, and, and I would have done, as Noel has said, work in the BBC before. That's independent contractor. That, yeah. they're complete but RTE cyber. wouldn't have paid for the catering at the launch of those, any of those events. Yeah. They wouldn't have provided staff. They wouldn't have had any I involved. understand your, no the nuance of your point. Yeah. So I think it's, it, it, it's a fair point you make about being an independent contractor, sure. but it's not necessarily a relevant point to this, because this was an arrangement created by RTE, at, your, at their behest, according to your, your evidence, that created by RTE. Yes. And the net effect of that was the taxpayer lost 75,000 euro and you gained it. 
Well, yeah, well again, this is... If so, I, this if, is if, can, I, can I address the statement? Whether you knew that was happening or not is a different question. No, I appreciate that. That, that is sure. what's happened. If, if I can address the first question raised to the stating, um, as a sponsor related show, Rana, we're perhaps the most important sponsor in, in, in all sponsors, um, and the fee paid by the sponsor related show would dwarf any other sponsorship that they'd had. Uh, RT was focused on keeping Renault happy, maximising the potential of their investment, and the late, late show. Um, I think Geraldine O'Leary said when she was here the other week that, like, and certainly during COVID, there was, they had tickets for the audience, they had no tickets for the audience, there's a green room, there's no green room. So they were trying Skelly, to. Keep... Uh, you're way off point. No, the, I, the, the, I point simple, point, the, the point is very simple. The point is very simple. I put Mr. Rubbly, I'll put it to you. Do you appreciate that the state, or sorry, that RTE lost seventy-five thousand euro worth of income as a fact, and that Mr. Turbidy's production company gained seventy-five thousand as a result of this tripartite? Well, well, no, I, I completely disagree with that. So no, but you, can, you can't disagree with that because no, that's what actually happened. I know, but if I can, if I can, yeah. just for Marisol, please explain. Um, as, so. The, the first 75 was paid by, was paid by Renault. The figure of 225, 75 was paid by Renault, not RTE, for delivery of three Renault road shows had nothing to do with Ryan's broadcasting contract. And the amount claimed uh, was their payment because they'd issued a credit note. We'd no, no, no idea about the mission credit no, notes. Mr. Kenny, I'm not asking you how it arose. Mr. Kenny, just for a moment. Sure. I, I appreciate your referring to us. I'm not asking you how it arose. I'm asking you, do you accept that RTE reduced its income from Renault by 75,000 euro and that Mr. Tuberty gained 75,000 euro additional income well, well, for I, additional work. Sure, sure. I, 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 th I think uh, with RTE and Renault, that's completely between RTE and Renault. Of we course, know, but we, my we, point we, is, we do you accept, no, it? So, do you accept we, that that's no what happens? Our, our understanding of what they do, like, as okay. you can see, we So I'm taking that no you idea. accept that that's the fact sure. of the situation. Sure, so we've no idea what, what, what yeah. Renault do. But In relation to Ryan's contract, it was a Well, Mr. Kelly, the crux contract. of the problem is, the crux of the problem is that that is what actually happened, and we need to find out who knew that, because it looks like there's an attempt to, de to, to deceive. Okay, well then, if that's if that's the question, we were deceived as well. We okay. were deceived as well. Okay, we, so no are, you, are you both no saying? Are you both saying that? And it's entirely likely that you don't know. Are you both saying you were not aware that our, the title sponsor, Late Late Show, was reducing its sponsorship by seventy-five thousand no. euro? No. So that never came up. That's not part no, of it. Absolutely. Because the cost-neutral nature of the agreement is really important. Sure. Because that's what really brings it down to the core. That money was taken off the books. And both of you are saying you had no idea that. In Miss O'Leary's evidence, she said she raised the credit note of seventy-five thousand euro, and she did that on the instruction of, of Miss Forbes. And you have you have no, no idea, idea or arrangement. No, no idea. And it never formed part of any of the contract no, negotiations no. and so on. That's great. Okay, look, that's import, uh, important. Important to get on the sure. table. Okay, Mr. Trubby, the difficulty with that is is that I suppose a lot of your colleagues uh, would would have taken reductions, mm. and they would perceive that this additional arrangement, facilitated arranged by RTE, was not in the spirit of uh, what was happening at the time. I suppose you want at some point to go back into RTE, to go into the canteen, to be able to look in the eye of the person serving you a cup of coffee, to talk down the mic of somebody who, there's a sound engineer at the other end of it, to look through the lens of, of a camera, you have to be able to look those people in the eye. Mm -hmm. you're, describing, the, you're describing my friends. Yeah, but the facts of the situation were that you received additional money and they did not. Yes. And back to my opening statement, that cuts were made down through the years, I think. Yeah. Did, oh, oh, did it come other up? reductions. 40% since, since 2012. Since 2012. 40%, which excludes the 120. The final 40%. figure is 40% pay cut. 40% pay cut. I, I, like, I really... No, I, I tried not to shirk my responsibility in that regard. Can. Fully accept that, but the facts are, are before us, and that, that, I think that is, that is your difficulty. This, this is why we're everyone's here difficulty. Yeah, I appreciate exactly. that. Mr Kelly, uh, I want to turn to the invoice that was raised. Um, so uh, there's an email in your pack, page 25, uh, which is, appears to be from uh, somebody in RTE, uh, which says, do not put any person's name on the invoice. Uh, if he sends it back uh, to me, then I will sort everything out. Who is that email from? Um, from Geraldine. It's oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. It, it, it's from somebody who worked for Geraldine. So it's from an RTE staff yes, member? Yes, yes. Can you provide us with the name of that person? Um, I, I'm happy if you want to reflect on it. Texas GDPR, uh, and it's... It, so, um, it's a GDPR issue. Yeah. Okay. It looks very clear to me, as somebody responsible for public money, that when someone says in an email, do not put any person's name or invoice uh, on the invoice, it's important for me to know who that was. I, I'd ask you to reflect on that, and if you can provide us the name, uh, I will be asking RT the same question. The second question then is, 
On the 7th of May, there was a, uh, a, a meeting, um, a Teams meeting, um, and there was four people at that meeting. Can you tell us who the four people were at that meeting? So were? that would have been um, Trish Whelan, the RT, one of the RT solicitors, D Forbes, myself, and a colleague of mine, Neve. A colleague of yours. Yes. So the fourth person that we haven't been able to identify so far was a colleague of your own. Yes. Again, useful information. Okay. So uh, I, I then turn to uh, the issue of the invoices. And I have to question Mr. Mr. Kelly you on this point because this is the invoice for the first 75,000 euro. Mm -hmm. And these are the invoices from the other two 75,000 euro. Yes. One by Noel Kelly, the other two by CMS. Yes. One with the full description. The other two without the full description. Yeah. All relating to the same 75,000, all relating to the arrangement with Renault. You're the only one that raised these two invoices. It really strikes it at the credibility of what you're saying is that you treated this separately from this. Even, though, even after RTE's instruction, you treated them separately. Would that be fair? Again, we were under instruction. As you can, as you can see, description from RTE, description from RTE, refer back to letter. But the emails were raised with you, you have a fiduciary responsibility as director of your company, you raised two for the same three payments, you raised them under different companies, yeah. and you raised them for different reasons, and to invoice them to, di to different people. Yeah, and they were, they were sent under instruction to RTE, um, and we presumed that, uh, that uh, Renner were going to be paying this. Okay, last point. Uh, you're very clear and you say that you, sh you should stress that NK management had no idea who assets were, they had no reason to think the assets was linked to RTE and no reason to believe that it was being made on behalf of RTE. Would you be surprised uh, that your name is also mentioned elsewhere in the assets account? This was, was this the rent, the... The, the, the barter account. Yeah, um, uh, sorry. I'm so on the t 30th of the 11th to 2018, uh, there's a reference to 2,394 euro raised in relation to a charity lunch uh, by Noel Kelly in, in aid of uh, Chernobyl. Right. That's, that's an RTE issue. No, but, but my understanding is that obviously a fundraising lunch, and I'm not sure. reflecting on the charity sure, in any sure, way. Sure, sure, sure. But it does strike to the, to the heart of your suggestion that you didn't know what Astus was when there was a previous arrangement uh, involving a charity lunch, albeit, where the Astus account was invoiced. Again, Deputy, like... Well, perhaps you might help us uh, if you could tell us how that invoice uh, was invoiced in the past and it had no connection with Astus, your story stacks up. If there's a previous invoice, if you told somebody to invoice Astus for the lunch, the charity lunch that you held, then the story doesn't. And I'm not, I, no, I, sure. I don't have the facts sure. before me, sure. I'm just asking you the question. I'm, I'm just terrified by that, please. Sorry, just terrified by that point for him. Yeah, and um, briefly. The, the lunch in question, RT wanted to take a table, so they, um, the people that were organised, they asked them to invoice that. I, I you know. So RT, thank RTE you. told the charity to invoice Astus. You didn't know it, Astus was invoiced. No. Okay. No. Yeah, Alan Kelly. No. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. <clears throat> um, just uh, stay where we're kind of at at the moment because. Um, uh, I read your documents and they were too late. It was insulting, by the way, for the committee and for the staff. Um, it didn't go down well. But I did find your documents uh, uh, quite compelling uh, and a very strong rebuttal. Um, my initial thoughts was begin to fall apart a bit. Um, RT, and they're watching this, obviously, and the DG is watching this. The statement that RT issued this morning is astonishing. If the DG is not watching this, somebody tell him that whoever issued this and how it was issued, because it's quite obvious from the documentation and fairness to yourselves that you provided in relation to uh, the um, uh, side payment or side deal. As the email from RT from um, Brida O'Keefe says, we can provide you with a side letter to underwrite this fee for the duration of the contract. It's quite obvious uh, that that evidence is, is very compelling to our committee based on the evidence we've been given before by RTE and completely contradictory. The two of them totally opposite. So that's a big tick mark on, on your side. However, on the other side, um, there was no 20% uh, drop in salary in real terms. Um, and to say so has no credibility whatsoever. Zero. 
uh, given uh, the 75k and, and the various different payments, um, it was absorbed in a different way that's quite obvious. The second issue which brings huge amount of credibility is you must have said, Mr Kelly, about 15 times you were acting under instructions from RTE in relation to the payment processes. So the first payment goes through Noel Kelly, uh, one of your companies, and that's ran out the first year. And the second one's uh, through Atos, uh, through CMS. So why the switch over? Okay. Um, but the real issue is, you know, I've always these emails coming into me from these whoever Nigerian cousins saying I won the lotto and they're instructing me to do the following X, Y, and Z. I don't do it. I think you've got serious accountancy issues here. I think your companies have serious accountancy issues here. Based on what the evidence you're giving in here. Because the fact is, this is not how companies behave. They get instructions to pay to an anonymized, unknown company uh, for something that's then referred as consultancy fees. And under a contract that has been negotiated with RTE for private work outside, and then switches from Noel Kelly to CMS for the second and third year. None of this is credible. It doesn't stand up. So that's where your arguments are falling down. Now, I want to base some questions. Firstly, you talk about, and you mentioned the 20%, and sorry, sharp, uh, short answers purely because of time, not, not trying to be rude or anything. Um, the 20% drop. In the years 2015 to 2019, then 2019 to 2023, um, I asked this question to Ryan. Um, your work schedule. So, Mr. Kelly has said you took a 20% drop. I think all of us know here now that that ain't accurate. But your work schedule. Were you doing the same amount of hours on all the shows? So, are we comparing apples with apples, oranges with oranges? Was there a change between 2015 to 2019 and 2019 to 23 in relation to your hours of work? So then we can correlate again across how much of a drop in pay there actually really was based on hours worked. You're trying to establish the percentage of the pay cut I took in the years from... No, I'm asking you, you the very simple question. No, it, I'm sorry, this I know, is not it's my tiresome, strength. I know. No, but, it's not tiresome, it's just it's not my ballpark. Okay, but, but did you do the same amount of hours on your radio show and TV show from 2020, 2019 to 2023 as you would do per year 2015 to 2019? I would imagine so, yeah. Okay. So it is the exact same? Yeah. Two, okay. two out of five um, one radio shows could go up to two, and then uh, 38 two-hour TV, TV provided, Minimum two-hour TV shows, but that could go on till 12 o'clock, could be two and a half hours, it just depends. Whether so you didn't make, look for any changes in the contract to lessen the amount of hours or lessen the end time or anything like that? I think that there were conversations insofar as... Um, the big issue is that... I can answer the, the, that. Sorry, the longer the duration of the Late Late Show, the more sponsors, well, asking, the, yes. the more advertising that actually goes in. I so understand there that. was a pushback in relation to we asked if we could finish the Late Late at a hard half 11. So that would have been two hours, and two hours is in the contract, but sometimes went on to 12, quarter past 12. I know. And I know. So, I, was so, I know. You know the score. Right. It can go late. But, but, late. But, but my point being is was there any changes in relation to your hours in actual real terms, uh, contractually or anything? And you're saying no. No. Okay, no. fine. No. Um, I just want to get back to the CMS versus NK issue because I'm very interested by Paul Maludi's kind of overlap of um, various different uh, uh, emails to yourselves in relation to the audit that came through. Um, it's interesting that she um, she asks uh, you the, you confirm the invoices uh, or she asks about the invoices uh, in on May the third in relation to the two seventy five thousands and. Um, you know, the emails go to NK management, um, but the response is from CMS. The response is information from CMS. My issue here is CMS, do they do, or have CMS done a large quantity of work with RTE separately? No. None. No. What is, why would NK management, um, why would that be swapped out and CMS put in for payment purposes, <coughs> communication purposes from a corporate management point of view? As I say, I own the two companies. 
and sometimes we'd invoice it out of one, sometimes out of another, and they'd cross invoice. So there's no. But like throwing your eyes to heaven, saying the crossover. No, no, from no, a corporate no, governance point of view, do you think that, from a corporate governance point of view, we, we again, from we, an accountancy point of view, sure. Again, we were asked to invoice. We were asked how to invoice, when to invoice. Yeah, but why sorry, now I'm, I'm going to be straight. I don't buy any of that. I don't think anybody listening, watching, here in this room buys that. As I've said earlier on, it's not. It's not. Uh, I think Deputy Dillon and Deputy Akatsik uh, went through this. Um, this is not appropriate and how things should be done. Okay? Um, so, in relation to NK management, can you tell us uh, there was a new company set up, Noel Kelly Management Nominees Limited, registered on the 16th of March 2023. So, this is a third company. Yeah. And what's the purpose of that? Um, I didn't. I, I, I didn't, uh, I'm not here to discuss that. Okay, I'm fine. I'm here to discuss fine, exactly fine. what's so it's not to, But it's nothing to do with anything to do with here? Yeah. It's not, obviously, no. then. Right, that's fine. In relation to, um, so from your, from your uh, perspective as regards, you sell, uh, you get advertising clients into RTE on the one hand, and obviously you represent various different clients agent, as an agent to the stars or talent, whatever phrase people are using these days, uh, on the other hand. So there must be significant, you're doing significant amount of business for RT as regards generating advertising revenue on the one hand, and obviously negotiating fairly significant contracts for your clients who work in RT on the other hand. Is that a fair statement? No. No? No, no. So, for instance, um, we have, we have uh, a young chef on our books, and um, sorry if you just, just sorry, sorry no, but I'm just, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to explain. The young chef on our books, and then we got that chef a book deal, right? So, so now the chef's an author, yeah. And then we got the chef a TV show. Some of the money that would so the the issue is there's 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 a huge lack of funding for program making. So we would try and get sponsors to help make. To help but you make do the get show. sponsors for RT to, for advertising purposes. For no, shows. it would be for it would be for completely independent shows. That okay, RT, well look, I'll be honest with you. Buy, but I'm just, I'm you're just not going to give me this information. I'll be asking RT for the last ten years sure. based on advertising and clients, mm -hmm. uh, all of that. So we'll be we'll be getting all that. Sure. Can my last three very quick questions to Ryan. Um, Earlier, your agents or your representative, Mr. Kelly, said a contract uh, isn't a contract unless it's agreed by both parties. So, how do you stand currently as regards your relationship with RTE? Are you implied or not? Uh, how do you perceive that? That's the first question. Okay, sec well, sec I, second question, you can take these down. That's the right. first question. Second question is in, in, in relation to in relation to um, the one of the gigs with Reynolds. There was a, an invoice for 847 for somebody to be assist you or something, you might draw a light on that because a number of us would. And thirdly, and this genuine honest question, um, Thai Show the Musical has been an unmitigated disaster, right? Conceptually in every way. In fairness to you, you had zero to do with it, right? Um, you didn't promote it, you weren't involved in it or anything. But from the outset, did you think that this was a disaster and a bad idea and you didn't want anything to do with it? There are my three last questions. Just, just briefly, Mr. Torrey. On all three? All three yeah. Just very briefly. Um, I, I, my understanding is I am still in contract with RTE, yes. And my aim and hope is to go back to work. Fair enough. Um, the, uh, the billing you referred to was a, a car service from Dublin to Drogheda and back all in one night. I can go into further detail if you wish, but that's what that is. For you or for somebody else? Oh, no, for me. Okay. Uh, and thirdly and finally, the toy show, the musical, I think that the uh, people in RT were trying to dream big. I always wished them well with that, but it wasn't for me. Okay, thank you. you. Just Deputy yeah. Catherine yeah. Murphy. Thank you, and you're, you're very welcome. Thank you, Deputy. Um, the, uh, just want to go back to the invoices. Um, and, like, the invoices are not, Mr. Kelly, are not a creative document. They're intended to be a true record to say what a service what service has been provided or what work is done. So essentially, both sides were complicit in what the chair of the, the board said, you know, designed to deceive. Um, uh, and so, like, do you accept that, uh, or did you challenge that, you know, that this... 
We, we were deceived. We, we no longer should serve the arrangement on the But you, you issued the invoices, like, do you know? I but mean, but if, if I could just explain, we weren't consulted ab about it, nor were we told at any stage of the nature. No, no, and we were instructed by RT no, for the I'm, second and third I'm, invoices I'm, I'm, on the Red Road Show to make out the invoice to artists I'm, I'm, for consultancy I'm, I'm, services. Look, we sent them to RTE who look out you, 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 you have a number of companies. You know what it is to raise an invoice. You, did, you, you took instructions from RTE sure. without, without challenge. Um, and essentially, there's there's a moral and legal imperative around that. Um, you know, essentially, um, and I'd like to ask Mr. Toberty. Um, can, sorry, can, um, can I just you know, finish you know, that? I, At the time, we didn't know who Astus was, and we yeah, presumed no, no, that they had, they, had, point, they had a relationship no, no, with moving, Renault, on, and we were following to, instructions. I, I want this and we got paid by Astus, not by, not by RTE. Yeah, this following instructions. It's kind of it's called the New Nuremberg Defence. Um, you know, Mr. Toberty, um, would you would you be happy with that kind of uh, of arrangement not being challenged, because it was being done in your name? Deputy Murphy, I, I I will tell you that my involvement in anything I've not I have not I have not sat down in front of an RT management person in 20 years to talk about money contracts anything like that whatsoever. That's why I have Mr. Noel Kelly. But are you are you happy with just following instructions in relation to like? You know what an invoice is. I mean, you, you know. Uh, I, I, honest to goodness, I don't get into invoices and that kind of thing. My no, job it's, is it's, to sit in front of a microphone it's, it's, and, and present a radio show or a TV show. Honest to goodness, I look, so I, I trust of, Noel. He trusts the process. We all we look, all hope to get the best deal in life. It's really not the question I'm asking. Hmm. I want I want to go back to the um, Grant Thornton are, are conducting a second review into 120,000. <coughs> we know there was a 225. That's the 75. They're 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 conducting uh, a, a, another review into the 120,000. That was 2017 to 2019. That you're saying categorically that just simply was waived, it wasn't paid, and RTE knew that. RTE knew that. Do you have any explanation why they would be conducting an expensive review into that? If they I've, I've, I've no idea. We, um, we have a further meeting with Grant Thornton on that. We asked RTE, um, bear me one second, I just. Sorry. We asked RTE. Mm -hmm. I, I can come in there if you like. Yeah, Deputy. In, in, in discussions with the RTE in March 2020, they indicated to us that they were going to treat um, this in their accounts. And they said for accountancy reasons that they were going to take the 120 off the previous three years' contracts. So uh, that's 50 in year five, 50 in year four, uh, 20 in year three, extraordinary figures. And we said that this didn't make any sense as we had neither invoiced or received or refunded the uh, 20, 120. So how could it be deducted? In? So this is the question you, uh, we were posing to them, saying this seems kind of mad. And Ortiz's proposed treatment of this would, would give the impression that I was being paid 120,000 euro less than I was actually paid. And we made it clear Deputy, that uh, the 120,000 should not be taken off or deducted for prior year actual earnings, as you can see in your booklet on pages 14 and 15. And Orty appeared to agree with our point and it accepted our amendments in the final letter of agreement on this issue. Again, page 16 of the documents provided. However, on the 21st and 23rd of January, when the top 10 earners were published, Orty appears to have reverted, oddly, to their original stance and deducted the 120,000, as they originally said they would do. So we were obviously very surprised to, to see that. Yeah, right, okay. Just um, in, in, in relation to the, um, you did open by saying that you're a, a, a contractor, and uh, we think we all understand. An independent that, contractor. Independent yeah. contractor. But RT would normally find you work as an independent contractor. Um, you know, and that's why this, is this, not ordinary. This, yeah. this is not ordinary, and yeah. that's how it's impossible for us to separate out. I understand the the, the difference between the Renault, the Renault uh, contract yeah. and your and your salary. Yes, because it's, effectively it would be RTE finding you work, where you would normally find that work yourself. Again, I would <laughs> hand this to, to Noel because he's the one who who finds the work, if you will, and and negotiates sure. the, the the contract side right. of things. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the value. Um, with Renault, uh, or for RTE is, is keeping Renault happy as a sponsor, keeping them on board, um, and making sure that they they come back season after season. So that's really 
why RT wanted to to do this. Um, they're the biggest sponsor that they actually yeah. the okay. biggest sponsor that they actually have. So yeah, can I just ask you? I'm very short on time. Can I? Can I? And I'm trying not to be rude. But just uh, uh, did you know, Mr. Kelly, that the that Renault had insisted on the commercial agreement was done on a cost neutral basis? No, I had no idea. Um, because that um, you know no obviously. Idea. Because we, we invoiced we invoiced Renault. I, we had no idea. Okay. No idea. Um, just um, uh, in relation to D, like Mr. Kelly, who would you normally deal with when you're dealing with, you know, the contractual arrangements for your your clients? I suppose, and, and it depends really. Um, like some of our contractors might do eight one half hour shows in a year, and that's it. So, but that's you wouldn't normally deal with the di di the director no, general. No, no, that would only be on, on 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 bigger contracts. So generally, it would be the head of head of uh, radio, and so some t some contracts just radio only. You do a one hour radio show once a week, or you might do. So, uh, D4 you know, so was break. not so D Forrest was not the only one that would would have been aware of all of this. No. We've, been, we've been told. Um, no, absolutely that, that was only one person but, but had sure, an overview of all of this. Couldn't have been. Couldn't have been. Couldn't have been. And that's why I find this whole thing so bizarre. But it, but, but in relation to sorry, so, some of our some guys might just have a one hour con uh, like a one hour radio contract. Some would have a TV contract. Some might have a bit of radio and a bit of TV, and so it would depend. Head of TV, under head of TV, executive, MD of TV, MD of radio. It, it would just depend where it would right. sit. And then you'd have an overall, like uh, Alan Tyler, um, uh, uh, sorry, stuff I, I, was saying, like he's head of entertainment. Sorry, I have very little time. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. So I'm just saying there's so many people. Okay. Like there's 1,800 people in the organisation. Right. So, so but many you, people you to don't, deal with. You don't operate for 1,800 people. You're an no, 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 uh, Rita O'Keefe's statement last week, um, she, she said that when I left in March 2020, an RTE guarantee on the proposal, uh, proposed Renault agreement was not uh, on, on offer as far as I was aware. So she's linking in the, the, the Renault agreement with the, the, the salary. Yeah. Um, and you can see why this keeps on coming back to this same thing. Um, and, and you have in your booklet, I think on page seven, the, the email from Rita O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. um, and was there other correspondence? Because this then wasn't finalised until May. Yeah. Um, and the RTE statement this morning is telling us that, um, that the, 20, the, the February agreement uh, was, is being characterised as a contractual commitment. Um, I, 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 if I can explain... The whole purpose of this, it wasn't about contract, not contract. The whole purpose of this was other people know, other people knew Bar D Forbes. That's the whole point. And all along, and it was said to you, like the week before last, central to this, nobody else knew, nobody else knew. It was no, there was no secret. There was no secret. And this is the, this is the, this is the secret piece. So there was no secret whatsoever, whatsoever. We don't, you know, there's no secret. Yeah. I mean, given all of, you know, all you, you've listened to over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Tobity, um, and, and you say you want to go back and work on the radio, it seems to me that, looking at it from your perspective, that appears to come across as strange, given the, given the uh, you know, all of the issues that you've documented in your, in, in, in your booklet and the opening statement. What, what's strange? Excuse it, me, sorry. Uh, like... <coughs> Wanting to, wanting to go back to an organisation that you obviously feel has badly uh, damaged you. I've, I've been ba badly damaged by the last three weeks, as, yes. uh, to be honest with you, but not necessarily by RTE as an institution. I think there are people that I'm trying to get back to work with, like most decent Irish people, they're, and they're making a, an honest living and they're working hard to pull to get together the shows, and I want to be back with them. I had my beef, with, obviously, with, with some people there, as is obvious in the documents, but... Uh, I still see my future there, yeah. Okay. Thank you very Thank you much, Chairperson. I just want to take the opportunity to welcome both of you here, and I think it's important to reference that you were not compelled to be here, which is, which is obviously welcome. Um, Mr. Torpity, the first question I have, have for you is, when you have a major guest coming on the show, how, often, how long does it take you to prepare for that? Well, 
Uh, that's it, that's it. If you, forgive me. It's not a question. Do, do you mean on the night of a show? Oh, no, or? Come on, it's a good question. I just want to ask: How long does it take you to prepare for a major act coming on the Late Late Show? It takes, it takes days and weeks. Okay. This is a 39-page document. Or just for people who are not aware, what it looks like. This this document was provided to us this morning. This came into our Microsoft Teams account this morning uh, at 8:23, uh, if I'm correct. Right. Yes. 39 pages. Yes. The meeting commenced at 10.30 in private session here today. Yes. That's not that much time to go no, through 39 pages. No, I understand. Like and I, Can and you I, accept, just one second. Yes. Can you accept how that's, it's not physically possible for anybody here to comprehensively go through that yeah. information? That was that was that, that was unfortunate. And, and I, I have to say, I do apologize to every single member of the committee for that. Uh, it has been a torturous three weeks. No, Wait, no, no, that. please, I, I please do, allow I, me to finish I, the I, sentence. Unfortunately, no, no, but unfortunately, you have to... This, what's gone missing in the last three just, weeks... Just briefly. Is, 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 like, forgive me. Yeah, just briefly. There's just been a humanity question. bypass a bit here. OK, so I just, just, just bear with us. We have worked tirelessly to put this document together. OK. And we got it in when we could. And I apologise. Thank you. Peter. Look, I appreciate your apology that. and accept it. And you know what? From, from purely from a human perspective, I think all of us here understand this is difficult. We're politicians. We know what it's like, OK, to be, to be, to be dragged through the river. And unfortunately, you know, this is the, the next point of questioning I wanted to come to anyway, Mr Fogarty, so you, you have, you have uh, moved on to that uh, properly. Look, the reason this has erupted is because of the work that was done by the report by the audit that was identified, that identified the, the pay arrangements and which we've discussed already with the executive board of RT. I just want to get a clear picture. When did you first become aware of the, I suppose, issues that were, were, were brought to light through uh, the audit that was carried out? When did you first get knowledge I'm, I'm, um, of that audit being carried out? I'm going to say, <clears throat> what are we on now, July, June? Maybe they, just when they started to, to, to be honest with you, when this state, when they issued the statement was when I really became engaged in this story. I had no idea just, this just, thing was Just going to clarify, on. I think that's a really important oh, question. I'm not trying to trip you up. No, I appreciate that. I'm telling you the truth. When did you myself, become aware here. that that report was being carried out? Pardon me, I'm sorry. I, I'm just asking you once again, I just want to ask you in relation to the report that was carried yes, out. Yes, 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 of course. When yeah. did you become aware of the Grant Thornton report? The 26th of June, 2023. Okay, so the 26th of June, 2023, was the very first time that you had knowledge that I had heard the report yes. was being done. And can I ask that in relation, uh, the same question, in relation to Mr. Kelly? Obviously, if they were, were delving into the pay arrangements, which they did highlight concerns with, mm -hmm. was, this, was that the same for you? No. Um, for us, it was uh, in May. We had uh, a meeting with Grant Thornton, and there was the... the May 23, is that correct? May, yeah, May 23, that we had a meeting with Grant Thornton. Um, is that the first time that documents were requested from your agency, your company, the, in yeah, relation so, to Mr Tuberty's pay? Um, on the 3rd of May, um, RT Legal emailed us uh, uh, and asked us about invoice queries. On the 26th of May, RT Legal wrote to us and said that Grant Thornton were investigating the process. 31st of May, we met with Grant Thornton and discussed everything with them. Um, on 23rd of June, Zorti's first statement, and then 26th of June, uh, we, we, we only received the report. We only received the report on the 26th of June. We didn't get a copy of the report. Okay. And when did you first alert Mr. Tuberty to, the, to, to the, that the report was being carried out and that perhaps well, you may have had on, concerns? On the, on the, was, the, was it the 22nd of June? The 22nd of June when the statement came out from, from RTE, um, uh, the statement, and then they released the report. We didn't even have the report. Yeah. And so at that stage, that's what we were saying. So, so that happened on the Thursday, and then it was four days later before they put in the correction saying that there was no wrongdoing on behalf of Ryan Tuberty ourselves. And then at that stage, Ryan was off air, and so the whole thing, so had, had they, uh, what did you say, not be so hasty or that there was... If they hadn't rushed everything out, 99% yeah, of this whole thing wouldn't be an issue because we would have given them everything they wanted if they the, simply asked questions. The reason, I want to, for them. the reason I want to ask you this question, I think it's for your own benefit, Mr Tuberty, right? And I know that you may feel I'm being some way indignant with you, but I'm not. Not at all. I, I totally I understand what you're the saying. The reason I'm asking it is because it's crucial to us understanding 
uh, and verifying that your, asking, your information I, I is correct. It was nothing to do with your decision to step down from the Late, late Show. Sorry, that's why I'm asking. You're trying to clarify the Late Show? No, 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 no I have, uh, that's clarified. I'm, I'm, I'm content with I'm that. So I'm happy to the hear The next that. thing I want to move on to is in relation to the deal surrounding um, uh, Renault. So in 2020, the first year of the deal, correct, was, or correct to say, was 2020. One, wasn't that right? Yeah, the first year should have been 2020, and then it would have been 2021 20, to do th uh, up to, to uh, up to 24. Um, but obviously, with, with COVID, there was no events on 20 or 21. So the first lot of events actually happened in 22, when we had the first road shows out out, out in, in in Cork, Dublin, Drogheda. And in 20, so at, at what stage were you informed by Reynolds that Reynolds that they were not going to continue on with their part of the deal in relation to? in relation to the pandemic, the outbreak of the pandemic and their withdrawal from that and subsequently RTE stepping in and providing the, the, the sure. funding to fill in the sure. gap? No, they never stepped back from the arrangement. Renner was still, Renner was still the sponsor. And it was no, like at no stage was it going to be RTE. But when I say step back from the arrangement, that we, we, as we've discussed here already, the money was paid by RTE, that, that 75,000, correct? No, the money was paid by Renault. Yes, but in terms of the later, the latter half of that, where they Mr. Tobin was not participating, they were, they were paid by Astus. They were paid by Astus. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which effectively, that's what we need to get an understanding of. Sure. What work was done in return for that in the in the later years during the oh, pandemic so for in the 2022? Last three, sure. So, as I said, the f the first three that were supposed to be done in 20 were done in 22. So, so there's still six road shows owed for. For, for 20 and 21, or if you, if you, if you like, 23, 24, so they're still, they're still under contract to do those roadshows. So you're saying to me that those are owed, owed that yeah, effectively yeah, yeah, that you have to go owed. on yeah, 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 and yeah, do yeah. them subsequently, which is paid, yeah. you're paid in advance, Mr. Yes. Trump. Yes, yes. service yeah, yeah, yeah. is outstanding. I absolutely yes. am, am good yeah. to that. No, I must ask, from, a, from the point of view of reputational damage, right, and I think this is key, did you not assess that going into the pandemic, in, in the, and we all know how difficult it was, and you broadcast throughout, throughout it um, with you know, great admiration and respect from the population. But did you in any way say to yourself, this is a dangerous situation because the published figures in relation pertaining to my salary that have been published in newspapers, I think the Irish, News, uh, the, the Irish Independent were publishing those figures, were not reflective of your actual take-home pay. And I have heard the evidence that you provided and, and what you've said. Yes. At the end of the day, there was a three-party agreement there involving the national broadcaster in RTE with Renault and yourselves. But did you not ask yourself the question, maybe it's just not wise for me to be taking this money at this point in time, considering what was going on in the country? Yep, I think it's a fair, it's a fair observation, and I probably should have been a bit more inquisitive about these things. You never asked us any questions in relation to that. I, I, I say what I say. I should have been more inquisitive. It's a fair, it's a fair point. Deputy, can I just answer there? Um, this contract was written before COVID. Before COVID. So it was just then COVID happened. So that, the, the, this was starting in, in, in 2020. To be fair, and then, Mr. Kelly, and then COVID but, started. But hang on a second, Mr. Kelly. To be fair, my, my line of questioning is reflecting that. Mm -hmm. But I'm just asking in relation to the outbreak of COVID, sure. was it really necessary that this arrangement in some shape or form remained in place where ultimately, you know, the taxpayers' money involved in RT as an organisation was being used to supplement Mr. Tuberty's income. That's the perception here we need to deal no, with. No, that, that, that's the perception, but that's not the reality. Okay. This was a contract with Renault for services and RT and Renault are, are again, are, 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 the, uh, are the parties. But those provided. services were not provided, yeah, but, but the payment the was made. At, at, to be honest with you, by 2022, they all would have been provided if, there was, if COVID wasn't there. Or we the know first that. Three years, we know that. So, now there's, six, so now there's six uh, road shows owed. Okay. Can I just ask in relation to the negotiations around pay? This is important because we did discuss it with the RT Executive Board. They were not very forthcoming with answers. Uh, and now there is a very, a, a very wide chasm between the information that you've provided us to today, uh, with us today and what they've given us previously. But I want to ask, who in the Executive Board of RT was involved in those pay negotiations? Who in the Executive Board? This was present and involved. Again, you'd have... Um, Head of TV, head of radio, they, you know, say right. We want these hours, we want those hours, and then they discuss that with uh, with the the CFO, with with the relevant accountants. And look, as I said, that there, there's there's there, there's lots of accountants and and lawyers, everything else. So they would all have their conversations, and then they would come back. And my job is to get the best deal from. I'm so sorry. 
But you, know, you didn't answer my question. No, so, and I'm so going who, to ask so you no, again. Said, who so, was so, president so, from the executive who would, who board who would, of RT who been, for these negotiations? Um, Frida, Trish, so the CFO, um, legal, and and then if there was an impasse, sorry. Um, if there was an impasse... Take a minute to read it, it's OK. Sure. So, sorry. So you'd have Breed, Breed, Breed O'Keefe, D Forbes, ourselves, our lawyer, um, and Jim Jennings from the exec. OK, look, I acknowledge my time is up. I can come back. OK, thank you. So we have to finish at 2 o'clock, OK? So I just have some questions myself. I want to ask, um, just Mr Keldy, um, the number of, uh, number of presenters you represent at RT, you said three of the top ten. How many in total do you represent? How many... How many people engaged at RT do you represent? Oh, Lord. Is it 20? Well, well, no, it no, not at all. The, 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 the ones that we really represent... Oh, Mario, look, I don't, don't delay the answer. I'm, sir, I'm asking you a straight sorry, question. Uh, we would represent full... Con so a full contract would be somebody who had TV and radio. Yeah. Um, that's three. And then there would be other people who might just do a so one-off series roughly, or whatever. Is it a dozen? Is it a dozen? No, it wouldn't be. Is it six? It would be, it'd okay. be near to, like I'd say, three full, and full time and then the rest would just okay. be part time or... And how would you describe your trade? We're, no. we're an agency that we... Uh, yeah, but, no, but your own trade, like your background in that. You're, are you a negotiator? Are you a consultant? You know, what type, what type of work have you done, we'll say? My, my, background, my, my background would be, would be marketing and brand. And sales. I, and, and, and sales, and I see okay. people as, as brands okay. and how, how, okay. how you take, uh, you know, a young... A young talent, and, and talent mm -hmm. to me, ta talent to me is like, it's every, it's, it's, talent to me is the person behind reception who makes you feel like today, the people that make us feel welcome when you come in, that's a talent, the, the camera people, the, the floor people, that talent to me isn't, isn't so like I, a rock god, that, that's or, 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 it, it's, that's, it's not like a, 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 thank you, thank a you singer or, we agree, or Tom we, Cruise we or stuff. On, we'll all agree on that one. Yeah. But just, just in relation to your, your, you know, the type of, so you come from a sales background. Yes, the American, American background. What, yeah. what kind of goods would you have sold? Sorry? What kind of goods would you, would you have sold? What kind of marketing would you have been well, involved I, in? Just, sorry, just briefly. So I have this company. Um, we've, uh, we've, we're Say going back before you got involved oh, with sure. RT. So we're, we're, we're years ago. NK CMS for uh, 26 years, before I worked for Cadbury's. Um, before what were you selling for Cadbury's? Sorry? What were you selling for Cadbury's? Cadbury's? Yeah, chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chocolate. Thank chocolate. you. That's fine. Yeah. Soap, anyway. That's, that's fine. Thank you. Soap. And tell me this: your relationship with D Forbes. Yes. Um, the senior staff at RTE, Dave described that you had a very close relationship. Yeah. With D Forbes. I saw that. I saw that. Well, if yes. a close if a close relationship is in a room with lawyers and accountants, and not a cup of tea between you, never had met for lunch, never met for dinner. I don't know the lady. I've always found her to be terribly professional. I'm working hard during COVID and everything else. I don't know the lady, okay. and I would only ever meet D Forbes if there was an impasse. In, a, in you know, in a contract okay. or where we're at or what can we do? Okay. Or, you know, so so I, I so, don't know her. So we say. But sorry, I, I, I've met her, but I, I'd like. I, I, yeah, and, and like I don't, I, I'm even I don't today, want to be to you, but you come from a background selling chocolate. Yeah. And now you're now you're negotiating on, on behalf of the top stars in the country, you know, and great success to, to you for that. Okay. Uh, in terms of you know, in terms of uh, deals, obviously you know how deals are done. Uh, and this, is, you know, this has always been fascinating, I think, in a lot of people's minds. In terms of, you know, the leverage that you have, we'll say, with, in terms of when you're negotiating, sure. what, tell me briefly what that leverage derives from, because RT have told us previously in this committee room, the Public Accounts Committee, sure. that uh, Mr Torbidi and other, you know, very popular stars, yeah. uh, very good at their job, would walk, right? You have said, no, that's not the case here today. So what does that, where does that leverage that. come from? So, um, I'll tell you exactly where, and... Tell me it's about the skill of that. Your, I come from a working class background. I come from a very, very hard working class background. Both my parents worked very hard. And all they ever said to us was, you work hard, and then you work harder. But and if we, you want something, then you, I, work, then, you, then you work hard again. So for me... I accept that. So, so, for, so for me, where, where it's does not, you don't have from? leverage. I, I, I manage people that have no management. I manage people that have no union, that have no representative. But, I, 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 I work with people that have, when, have contract Can I cut to the chase? Can I cut to the chase? Sure, sure, sorry, sorry. Anybody that's ever done a bit of wheeling and dealing with notice, right? When you were sitting there, you know, and it's whoever blinks first, right? And you're there and you're negotiating with the with the top finance people or legal people or indeed with the director, mm -hmm. director general. 
where does that leverage derive from? Because there's a clear contradiction between your position, right, and you come from a background of sales, you know, and you yeah. get selling and chocolate and you're not being derived sure. from That's just and fair play yeah, to yeah. you. You worked, you worked your way up yeah, that, yeah. right? But, um, uh, you know, where does that leverage come from? You're not giving me an answer to this. I, I don't understand what you mean by well, leverage. Well, I, I well, don't understand the power, that. Where does the power, in other words, you are bargaining and power. You need bargaining power when you're wheeling and dealing and when you're, you know, when you're involved in sales, when you're involved in negotiations. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're, sorry. You're sorry, involved in serious sorry, negotiations. I, I, no, I get you, I get you. Sorry, Mr. Kelly, no, let me clarify. You're involved with, you know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. You're involved in serious negotiations, mm. and don't minimise this, right? Mm. On behalf of... I'm not stars, trying to. I'm not trying to. Where does the leverage and power derive from? It, it, you know, it, it's not leverage or power. It's all based on fact, and it's all based on figures and commercial reality. And that's what it's based on. And, and I, I, o, over the period of those six years from 2012 to 2020, Ryan Turbley's shows... Now, you could say somebody else could do the show and all of that sort of stuff. Mm. Ryan Turbley's shows over that six with period... The team, with, the with, with the team, completely, hugely the team. I mean, the, the team, it's a jigsaw of talent. Oh, oh. So, he took, over those six years, Ryan Turbley brought in 100 million in commercial revenue. And in, and in fairness, it's a hugely, it was a hugely successful commercial... Operation. They, like in 2001, I, I they took in no, 148 no, million in OT, just, purely in commercial and not licensed. Okay. So it's a, it's a you've big. Out, you've outlined that very well, and thanks for that. So just, just in relation to some people in RT, you know, we have looking at some of the documents come mm -hmm. across to me that you have significant influence and significant power in terms of negotiating yeah. at RT. And some people, you know, been more than once over the years, been said to me, the real director general at RT is Noel, is Noel Kelly. Is you? It's any, it's, any, it's any basis in fact. I know it's. I'm just. <laughs> that's what that's what's being said. Not by do somebody. You know do you know not what? by somebody on the street corner. This is by people who are working in RTE. Okay. It's, 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 it's you know what? It's so it's so ridiculous. We do deals. Right. And we and, and we do contracts. Okay. For, for for our people, you know, I might be in and, RTE. And can I move six to times six times in a year, you know. But but equally, we do we would be working with BBC, NBC, okay. you know. So, so it's not. Can I move to one of those deals for a moment, just in relation to the Renault deal, the tripartite sure. deal, yourselves, Renault, and RTE. It was uh, it's a one-year deal from from October 2020 to December 21. Um, so we've been told from the start that it's a three-year deal, but it wasn't a three-year deal. It's here in front of me. Have it, have it here, okay. I've read it, read it carefully, that uh, it's a three-year three -year deal, or intended to be a three-year deal. But that's, that's not seen in the contract anywhere. It's nowhere in the contract. It, it, it was intended to be a five-year deal? Yeah, but it's not in the contract. Right, mm. right. And can I ask you this? And, that's, and you, would, you would be used to signing contracts, right? Uh, why, why did you expect RTE to underwrite it for, for three years? When, it, when this is only a one-year deal. Again, um, why? The, the, the relationship is with, is with Renault and the sponsor. I, I sorry, Renault, Re, Renault and RTE. But why did and, you and, and all I actually want them to no, under, legally, all I want legally, them to underwrite was that if the sponsor changed legally, Mr. Kelly, hold on now, you're signing the deal, and you know that unless it's nailed down in that signed on the dotted line, right, it doesn't stand for anything. Isn't that correct? You no. know that. We 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 had, had as deals, said, we, we had three a, years. We had a separate contract. Okay. For Ryan to do this outside of his radio me, TV. And tell me, why is there no figure mentioned in, in it? There is no figure mentioned of 75,000 per annum. Well, why is that? Sorry, in the pack, um, in the invoice, and the, instru letter. and the instructions, yeah. everything you said, is there. I mean, you rubbish the side letter earlier on in it. You minimised the side letter, right? You minimised that earlier on in the meeting. The document, the primary document, is the tripartite agreement. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So, why? So, here we have a document. That with no figure mentioned in it, not signed up for a three year deal, but you're working on the basis that has three year deals, right? Uh, and the other question I want to ask you is that why, and I haven't heard a clear explanation for this, why was this only signed on the 21st of April this year when the 10 10 20 hit the fan? Because it was a working document. The first one's supposed to be 20, then 21, working 22. Document. So that's that's why, to be honest a with you, it was, it was a working document in so but far as it, it was about. But Mr. Kelly, you're asking me and the committee and the public to believe here today. And just let me tell you what you're asking to believe. Mm -hmm. There's are asking them to believe that you'll sign in it, that you'll enter into an agreement, not, <clears throat> excuse me, not signed to this year, right? Gone over, it's run three years without having it nailed down legally and without the signatures 
of your agency on sure. it. Sure. That's, well, that's but, cock and bull. But, but, but the, the agreement, uh, Kerlock, came from RTE to us. No, no, it won't get where it came from. But, you, you are an agent, right, a professional agent, mm -hmm. right? And people say you're very successful at it. You mean to tell me that you entered into this without this having been tied down for three years? Because that's the effect of it. You did not sell it. Uh, Neve McCormack signed it on 21st of the 4th on behalf of you and Mr. Torberty. 21st of the 4th or 23. And can I ask you this? An RT never signed it. There's no RT signature on it. And let me just say this to you. What's also incredible is the second last line in the agreement says, once signed by all parties, this agreement will constitute a legally binding agreement, a, regal, a legally binding document, and it's acknowledged that there is a valid consideration for this agreement, once it's signed by all parties. Now, you were telling me you went along on a wing and a prayer with four major faults in this. No signatures, not signed, signed this year, you know, no figures mentioned in it, not a three-year deal. And you were happy, as a professional agent, to sign off on this. You're asking me to believe that. The whole, the contract in total? was brokered between us. The contract was with RTE and Renault, and we were the third party to this contract. We agreed for 75,000 a year for a separate contract to provide yes. those services, and that's what, that's what and, we did, Carol. And Mr Kelly, you don't sign into contracts. You know, and I know, that you don't sign contracts, or you don't enter into agreements or contracts on the basis of a document like that. You know that. I'm not correct in saying that. But RTE had brokered the contract. I don't care who brokered it. You. You're telling me that you went along for three years on a wing and a prayer. That's, just what, you're, that's what you're expecting us to believe here today. No, I, and, and I don't believe that. OK, well, I don't believe you. going along on a wing and a prayer. Obviously, I, the events were pushed out because of COVID. I don't care what was pushed out. There was nothing to stop it from coming in an envelope and signing it. It could have been sent by a courier to you, and you could have signed it, right, back at that time. But you didn't, and the figures weren't in it. And the three-year dimension wasn't in it. That's the facts. That deal, that deal is not credible the way, the way it's framed. Well, the deal was brokered okay. by RTE. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, look, we've gone through a lot of questions, and we have to finish because, in fairness to the witnesses, in fairness to you, you have come voluntarily. You know, you've gone through three hours of questioning. I know, Mr. Torberty and Mr. Kelly, you're facing three more hours in the afternoon, so I want to be fair to you. You need a break of an hour, right? So, I'm going to. Um, uh, I, I want to thank you for attending. I also want to thank the Control and Auditor General, James McCarthy, and his staff for attending. It is agreed that the Clerk will seek any follow-up information and carry out any agreed actions arising from the meeting. Agreed. agreed. Okay. Uh, it is also agreed that we note and publish the opening statements and briefing material provided for today's meeting. Yes. Agreed. And I welcome the fact, I know they were long, I wanted, to, I wanted you to be able to read out your side of it. Yes. That was important at the start and of the okay, Carrie, like before, five minutes. Before I go, can I, can can I, can I just br remark, briefly please. say, Gamleska, just, just to say, uh, thank you to the committee for the courtesy with which they have afforded us with their questions today. I'm sure there are more pressing issues in the world, but at the same time, that's not to belittle what we were talking about today. Thank you for your time and I thank you for just sharing. Personally, thanks for attending. No, you've heard, you've, we you've probably, heard, you've probably have heard me quoted as saying many times that it is really important to hear your side of no. it and get you in. As I say, we respect and, the Iraq to send the committee, so thank you. I want to thank, thank you for that. So the meeting of the Public Council Committee is adjourned from 9.30 on Thursday, the 13th of July. Thank you very much. Come on.